All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. It is so exciting about this powerful, exciting call tonight. My name is Katrina Williams, Vice President of Spitfire International, an entertainment company. I'm going to get straight into the information because this is one of the biggest calls going on tonight, y'all. Just to int- I want to introduce you all to someone who has been in the music industry over the last decade. He is known for turning the party up. Everybody, please allow me to introduce to you all international island celebrity from Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. DJ Ninja. DJ Ninja, are you on the line? Oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? All my island people, all my supporters worldwide, everybody, y'all, one love, one love. Y'all know how we do, man. One love, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful day to day in the Tennessee area, in the Memphis area, man. You know, I, I, I really, 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 really want to give my regards to everybody online right now. To the million of viewers, to thousands of viewers online, man. We just keep coming in. I got a special guest for y'all tonight, man. What I'm talking about, this guy is turning numbers. He is turning the weed. He has been on a lot of talk shows. He has been on a lot of big tickets. He has been with a lot of celebrities just like myself. No other day. West Coast legend, DJ Yeah, Yeah, you know how we do it, man. Ninja's in the mother house. That's right. Ninja, man, I just want to thank you for having me and Lloyd Elves in the building. Everybody that's on the tune in, on the check in. You know what I mean? Great things happening, man. Boy, it's great to be alive, and it's nothing without God. You know what I mean? Uh, just an honor to be on your show, you know, with everybody, man. I'm, I'm a Spitfire team over there, you know what I mean? Big shout-out to you. Big shout-out to the whole beautiful Tennessee, man, to Tennessee, to Tennessee. That's how it's going right here. <laughs> and don't forget, we also have in the building the incredible Mr. Lloyd Elves. Give it up for Lloyd Elves, folks. There he is. All oh, right, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for uh, for having me on, too, man. God bless everybody. Everybody in Tennessee, everybody across the world, thank you so much. Humbled, man. Very humbled. Indeed, and we can't forget about the incredible DJ Ninja there. And, uh, and DJ Ninja, talking. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Right back at you. And, uh, right back at you. Legends connecting, man. You know, that's what it is. That's right. That's right. Now, we're going to kind of do, we're kind of like going to do an invasion on DJ Ninja's show right now with us. We're going to kind of like take over the show right now, and I think you have no problem with this, with us taking over, you know, the Spitfire show right now tonight, folks. So, uh, you know, so many times we go on people's show and we're getting interviewed, but we're going to kind of like flip the script tonight, bro. Right? You know what I mean? You got to flip it, man. You got to flip it up, rub it down. You got to just do it, man. You got to shake it up. Oh, no. You got to BBB it, man. You got to bell bib devote it, man. Uh, Sometimes make sure that, you know, man, poison. Yeah. Cool you know, I'm, looking for, I'm, I, I'm at the Asilomar right now, the craziest thing, man. I just, something came over me, man. I just, I started driving down there because I thought to myself, man, I know this key has got to be over here maybe because you were over at the Lover's Point. Now, I know you were staying over at the Mermaid. But I'm trying to think, you know what I mean? You were walking on the beach, and you were uh, you were just in a daze. You you had, you had just, the ocean was taking over, and I don't know, man. You couldn't yeah. drop that key over here. I've been looking uh, with Miss Unshakable over here, and, and she's looking. I got the metal detector from Walmart. I'm out here right now. It's crazy, and people, it's just, it's nuts. They're turning over cars. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah. I even see like a hand glider. I think he's yeah. in on the action. I think he's in on the action, and you know, I was thinking about that, and then I, it dawned on me that actually, it was before I caught the flight to Tennessee that I remember having the key. So it's not over there, Lloyd. It, it came with me to Tennessee. Oh, shit. I'm getting Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Miss Unshakable. Oh shit! I think 
No, nah, she found a ring. Oh, okay. I thought you said you found the key. It's a, it's a ring she found. Somebody's wedding ring. Leg. I'm telling you, leg. I'm, I'm telling you, you're looking for nothing, dude. You're, you're, I'm you're looking, looking for nothing. You're looking for nothing. Money, though. That's the whole thing. Yeah, but listen, I, I just told you. I remember getting on the plane and flying to Tennessee. I remember the key being with me when I went to Tennessee. Maybe, though. Maybe. But is it, is it the key? That's what we got to find out. We have to find out if it's the key. But we'll That's find right. out. I think uh, Ninja. I think Ninja might know. But uh, I want everybody to know who Ninja is right now on the phone. Ninja, why don't you tell everybody where you come from, Ninja? Man, I came from Trinidad. Trinidad. From the island. Now, yes. So land. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, ain't that where, where uh, Rihanna's from there, too? No, no, no. Rihanna is actually from Barbados. Yeah. Is that close by Trinidad? But, but, but you know, Nicki Minaj, she's from Trinidad. Oh, it's Nicki. Right. Nicki, Nicki, and, uh, Nicki and Riri. Yeah, Nicki and Riri. I got mixed up with both of them, too. Uh, right. They're, they're both uh, incredible artists. Now, being from Trinidad, there's an incredible music craze that's always been, you know, real live and real big and Trinidad, and it's called Soca Music, and everybody in New York, when I was out over there, that's all they played. Uh, how, how does that play a role in your life? Man, to be honest with you, check this out. It's called Carnival. It's a festival there for mm-hmm. goes on every year, you know, in February. All the party lovers, right. all the fat lovers, all the ongoers, you know, that just want to party and have a good time and get some drinks. You know, and meddle around, want to mingle and stuff like that, man. They come out there and have a good old time, man. Go into different bars, drinking, you know, playing different um, poker games. And, you know, they're, they're just having a good old time, man. You know what I mean? Just taking shots after shots, you know. Um, you know, smoke some big old cigars. I mean, you know, hey, just having a good old time and just chipping yeah, down with the like music. The cigars, man. I love it. I love it. I yeah. Love it. Well, well, you know, they got well, great. They got great tobacco. Great tobacco down there. Great yeah. tobacco growing region. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, now I know. Now I know what White Club was talking about because you know his label is called Carnival, and uh, we're also performing this Sunday in Pomona, California. Guess what the name of the club is called? Club Carnival, September twenty third, uh, this Sunday in Pomona, California. The Sugar Sugar Cane Show. With, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, big love to that, man. That's what's up. Yeah. A big exactly. shout out to the Sugar Cane Show, like, y'all. That's right. That's kind of the key word right now, carnival. And uh, so many beautiful people in and in Trinidad. And with the soca music, everything that comes out over there is, is so incredible, man. And we had, we had to go visit. Maybe when we find the key, we'll go visit uh, Trinidad. What y'all yeah. think about that? Yeah. I think it's going to be a beautiful thing, folks. I think it's going to be a beautiful thing now. Yeah, because Linda. it's awesome, Linda. man. Trinidad is awesome because when I DJed Carnival over there, you know, I did that for like three years, and that was pretty awesome, bro. I mean, it's like the whole city comes out their house and follow you on this big old truck or big old trailer truck to the city. While the booming of the music, boom, 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 you know, is is literally shaking these people's houses and, you know, all their picture frames is falling down. And I know they'd be kind of mad, but they'd be enjoying themselves anyway. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) That's the culture, man. That's the culture. That's the culture right there. That's the culture. And Ninja, you know, from DJ to DJ, from DJ King Assassin to DJ Ninja (laughs) over there. And this is for a lot of DJs out there. And... People that, that just tune in and that love DJs, that actually love the craft so much they buy their own equipment to be like a <laughs> DJ. This is a good question for you. A good question. I'm, I'm going to tell you, uh, what did you first start off using as a DJ and what do you use now? Because today is a whole different type of technology to DJ you. You can still yes, stick with the sir. old school type of DJ, but you still got to kind of go to the new school because the new school can alleviate the pressure of how you move around and how you mobile around because sometimes you don't want to carry those heavy 12, 1200s around, man, because they're like, it's like carrying around like, uh, you know, two, 
two big old uh, bricks. You know, it's like, it's like, like a dozen of bricks. <laughs> it's like a dozen bricks. You almost one turntable waves, you know Man, I mean? that's so, like crates uh, back in the days. <laughs> and crates, yeah, yeah. And crates would be like, you know, how Tupac used to carry the crates for Digital Underground back in the days. You know, right. But, uh, Tell us, tell us. You know, what did you start um, with that? Okay, you, well, when I, first, when I first started off DJing, my, um, my, actual, my mom and my parents, you know, they had a club, and um, <clears throat> I started off in there and really using a CD player and a DVD player with a mixer in the middle. <laughs> uh, right. Man, exactly. I had to catch it. I had to catch them on the beat. You know, and then mix that in there, man. And and I also had like little bells, call bells back in the day. You know, ping, ping, ping. You know, <laughs> you oh, know, so you special effects. You have the cowbell that's special. Yeah. Like, like you, like you yeah, man. Wow. You know the cowbells, the flangers. You know, back in the day. But man, the way how technology has changed, I'm so happy that I went through that phase to get where I'm at today. You see what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> nice. Right. Nice. Man, you got to you got you got to start from you know a better a better way of probably saying that is is technology is you know is what it is today and you have to you have to start from the old school to bring you know the new the into into yeah. play. You you have to do that. You know, some of these new guys, yeah, they just start with all the new technology, but they don't understand you know really you know how it got to that point. So man, exactly. The history behind the whole uh, mechanism. <laughs> That's right, and uh, you know I get that question all the time. They say, uh, "DJ King Assassin, how how did you start off? What did you do?" Yeah, I know. Do, <laughs> I bet you got a crazy you know, story, you know, man. man. Yeah, you know, uh, it started off with my mom's eight track. My mom's eight track. Uh, well, I actually, to go even further than that, I think I, I went on that on that live stream yesterday and, and really talked about that. It was like actually three uh, cassette tape, you know, players. It was three cassette tape players. I had three of them. You know, it was the kind that they used to use in public schools and whatnot. Those type of tape players. I had three of them. Uh, we got lucky and went to a garage sale. It was actually a, a school sale because the schools used to have garage sales too, and they were you know, uh, selling the cassette, the little small little cassette players, you know, that kids used to use to teach, you know, other kids English and ESL, you know what I mean? Because uh, a lot of the kids from Mexico would come out here to California and they didn't know English, so they would use these tape recorders to actually, you know, teach them English. So every year they would get rid of them because they'd update and get newer systems and whatnot. So I have three of those. And one would be playing the music, and then another one would be queued up, and at cue point, I would pause it. It was called pause mixing. So I was pausing both of these cassette players to go back to back while one was recording two of them. Those were my turntables. My turntables actually weren't even turntables. They were cassette players. I didn't have turntables until I figured it out. Well, how did you figure it out? Because you didn't have money to buy 1200 money to buy the expensive equipment, plus I was only like well, 12, 13 years old. Exactly. Yeah, like like I said, my mom had an A track player with the with a uh, a phonographic, you know, record player on top of it. So what I did was I opened up the system, I, I like broke it apart, and took out the turntable from it. And she had like a couple other ones, and I did the same thing too. So I, that's how I got my turntables. I made my own turntables. I pulled them out of the A track player. That, that was locked into a phonographic player and then made uh, my own cardboard boxes and put them in cardboard boxes so both of the turntables looked the same. And I put them side by side. Then I went to Radio Shack and bought a microphone mixer, not even a DJ mixer. It was called a microphone mixer. It had like four lines on it. And voila, that was my mixer. And those were my turntables. Oh. And it looked pretty yeah. nice. Uh, it was original. It was original and it did the job. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it had no pitch control. My pitch control was my hands. I had to, you know, move the record faster to get it on beat and, and keep it on beat with my hands. And uh, it was amazing. So once I, I got the real equipment, I, I, I became I, a monster. Man, <laughs> I, I understand where you're going at. And, you know, and this coming back to, to when, I, when I started off with mine, you know, I had to count the buttons down and the numbers and then mix it onto the other numbers. <laughs> right. Man, uh... Incredible history right here. 
you know what I mean? And and everybody tuned in who, who just came in. We're going to let y'all talk, too. Uh, now, Lloyd, I'm kind of like, you know. Uh, What's up, Lloyd? With, with What's happening? Over there, I'm, I'm, just enjoying, I'm just enjoying listening like a fly on the wall over here, just listening to you know, the conversation of, of, of the history of, of, of both of you guys right now and how you got started, man. And it's very, very interesting to hear that. Listen, Lloyd, Lloyd, the reason why I say that because, you know, you, you didn't come from the DJ aspect, but you come from that same realm of, around the same, same time frame as, as me, man. And right. what I want to ask you, what I want to ask you is, you know, you're a producer, man. You're a producer. So what did you start off with? What kind of equipment did you have? Because I know you, you couldn't afford a lot of the things in life growing up because, you know what I mean? Nobody's going to invest in you. Nobody's going to do this. You're young. People just don't well, believe in that well, I started off, yeah, I started off actually, you know, when I, when I first got into it, um, you know, just music in general, you know, I would, I would use a double tape deck, you know, I, I, I had gotten a double tape deck, uh, uh, for Christmas, man. That was my, you know, that's all I wanted, man. I opened everything up and, and, and it was the last thing coming in was, a, you know, I was like, man, I was, I had this look on my face, like, man, I wanted this double tape deck because, you know, I could take and I could duplicate tapes and then, you know, I was able, I had another tape deck. Uh, which was a single tape deck. So I would take that double tape deck. And from that, I would actually have it queued up as well. Did sort of the same type of thing, but I was actually recording from uh, uh, a live feed, which was uh, at that time, it was KSBW, Super Soul Sunday. So I would get all those mixes and stuff, but using my double tape deck. Wow. Um, so, you know, I, I really wasn't a DJ, but I was, you know, messing around with that before, you know, I had gotten my keyboard, and then I, you know, I had gotten my first keyboard back in 1984. It was a, uh, uh, I still have it today. It was a Juno 106. So I was playing around with that and a and an RX11 drum machine, okay, which I programmed the RX11 drum machine, um, and I was playing synthesizer on top of that. And and at, at that time, you know, I was taking and and building sounds and 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 using the tape player, which is very similar, uh, you know, to what you guys were doing. But taking the sounds uh, that I made off, you know, on live uh, and basically, you know, uh, saving those sounds to a tape, which I could there, wow. you know, after that, take that and, and, and bring those sounds up later through a tape paint. Wow. Awesome. Now, now you have a special... Awesome. So that's, that's, how special I got my that's how I got my sounds initially was by building them from scratch off of the, you know, off of the uh, Juno 106, Roland Juno 106. Yes. Yeah. Now tell us a story about the Juno 106 because it it took a lot to get that. You it just didn't land in your hands. Tell us how you got that Juno 106. There's a special story behind that Juno 106. Well, we'll, we'll make it. It's a long story, but we'll make it real short. You know, um, you know, for you know, for this this time around. Um, you know, I, I was going into a, a, a music store every day after school. You know, um, that was really the only thing that was on my mind was you know was playing the synthesizer. So I went to, you know, Alvarado Street, which is in Monterey, um, every day after school, and I would play, you know, Axel F and, and you know, mostly Axel F. Uh, I knew other songs and stuff, but for some reason, man, that song, you know, it, it sounded so dope on the, you know, on the synthesizer at the time because I found that right sound, you know, and uh, I'd just play it and play it and play it, man. I, I just couldn't get enough of, of the keyboard, and I tried it in different, you know, uh, banks because it had two banks, bank A and bank B. So you had 128 sounds on each bank. So I would go in there and, you know, I was learning the keyboard as I was going there every day. So to make a long story short, you know, I had gone in there for probably, you know, a year straight. And these guys were just tired of, of seeing me, man. And, and they were like, man, don't, don't, don't play that Axel F again, man, you know. And so they said, well, you know, um, you've been playing the keyboard enough. You know, you're not really going to buy anything. So, you know, you need, you're 86. So maybe it was two years that I was playing around because at that time, you know, uh, it, it was almost 86. I think it was 86 at that time. I was playing, I think, for two years. So my grandmother felt bad, to make a long story short, and she gave me a check for the whole amount of this keyboard. But she didn't just give me the check. I had to work it off because I was working at the time. You know, I worked with my folks. And uh, so every paycheck I would give my grandmother, um, you know, $50, you know, towards, uh, you know, towards this keyboard. And, and she taught me, you know, the responsibility and, and I still have that keyboard, you know, to this day. Um, and I'm glad that she did that because it wasn't just given to me like, oh, here you go, because, you know, I had to work for it. So I was only 12 years old at the time, and I, 
That was a lot of money with $800, $876.42. How do I remember that? I'm going to tell you how I remember it. It's because I had to pay every cent back, man. And it taught me at that time. And I still have that keyboard to this day, man. And, and you know, I, I had my grandmother to thank for that because she taught me, you know, responsibility. And I took better care of this synthesizer because I had to pay for it with my own money. And I worked. Exactly. That's an incredible story. Now, Lloyd, a lot of people ask us this. You already know I know the, the answer to this, but I know a lot of people still don't know the answer to this from you. How did you meet DJ King Assassin? You know, I met you uh, actually uh, through, I was working with um, with Frankie Lane, and uh, he was working at the time with Maxine Jones, and you were very close and are very close with Maxine Jones and have a really good relationship with her. And, you know, she, she brought you down and you and I, you know, clicked up and we met and we had a lot in common because of, you know, not only did you own a Juno 106 and it was one of your favorite boards, but, you know, of course I had one too. And we, you know, we kicked it off, you know, uh, from there, you know, so much in common. I used to break dance. You used to break dance, you know, um, just a lot of the things that, you know, um, that we've done in our life, you know, we have, we have common uh, ground where that's concerned musically and everything else. I know you're a DJ, I'm a producer, but we still, you know, speak the same language. And, and uh, you know, in the end, we both make music. That's right. That's right. Right now, did you ever know, tell us the story, like, like when you hooked up with me, we got the King of Sass and show rolling, but you know the history of the King of Sass and show and, did you ever think it would get to where it is now as far as what's I, going I, on? In, in... I, I never did. Uh, in fact, in fact, I, I guess I really never gave it, you know, thought as to, you know, where's this show going to go? I think the whole time I've just been living on the fly and enjoying every single moment of the blessings that, you know, God keeps, you know, putting forth. And I, and, and I, and I say that and mean that because, you know, my life, you know, has had a lot of ups and downs and a lot of highs and a lot of lows. But right now, you know, I'm flying high and I'm, and I'm enjoying, you know, every minute of it through the grace of God. And, and, and I know that he put you and I together and, you know, I'm very thankful, you know, for that. I'm thankful for the show and where the show's going and, and everything is, you know, effortlessly because we're both enjoying, I think what we're doing and, you know, there's, you know, there's no stress where that's concerned. You know, we're, we're one take Jake in it. We're doing our thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm just enjoying the ride, you know, uh, every minute of it, man, minute by minute. Minute by minute. And I'm glad you said that because, you know, I had no idea at all that the King of Assassin show would be where it's at today. And the only reason why it's where it's at today is because of this man right here on the phone, Mr. Lloyd L.A.L.S. And I got to give it up to you, Lloyd, because when when I initially started the King of Assassin show, it wasn't – you know, a remote connection, meaning it wasn't in the streets like it is now. It, it was just a, a show that we had in Hollywood, and we would interview artists, and they come in, and we would do that. Uh, later, that TV network, you know, folded, and I had a show there. Crazy Bone had a show there. Edie from the Outlaws had a show there. Uh, so did Dave Navarro from James Addiction. He had a show there. You name it, a lot of uh, celebrities had shows there. But, uh, of course, that... TV network kind of folded, so it wasn't until like about, you know, years later that, you know, I said, you know what, I'm going to bring the King of Fashion show back, so I started bringing it back, but when I brought it back, it was more of a video countdown that I was doing, and I, I started back when I got out the hospital, you know, and we'll get into the health situation later, because I know a lot of people are wondering about that with my situation, what I went through, but, uh, you know, once I got out the hospital, it was a situation where... Uh, I said, man, we need to, I need to get out. I got to be more active. I got to, you know, be healthy with everything that I choose to do in life. And I took it to the streets with Lloyd, you know what I mean? And Lloyd, he was the one that, it wasn't even an idea. It was something we just did for fun that we sat back later and looked at it and said, man, this looks pretty cool. Why don't we just keep on doing this and we'll call it the King of Fashion Show. You know what I mean? So it turned into, as you can see, Everybody that's listening, that's that's how the King of Fashion Show turned into what it is today with me and, and Lloyd Alves. And what we do is we go out in every community in America, you know, especially California, but we're going to hit all the other uh, states here real soon because we got a 
we got a, a big terror coming up. You know what I mean? We got a lot of cities coming up. So, you know, it started from that situation to where it is now. And, and I thank every minute. I thank God first and foremost, uh, you know, to, to take it to the level of the King of Staff. So, so it's kind of been, you know, slowly bubbling for the past six, seven years. The King of Fashion Show, but it, but it was nothing like how it was, you know, years ago to how it is now because it's more of a remote connection that we do, and, and we go out to the community every day. Uh, and there's 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 film, there's other you know footage that you haven't seen that we do behind the scenes, you know, for the community. You probably seen some where we give out a lot of food to the homeless and stuff like that. So you know, we're really for the community, not just in our own community, but worldwide. And the shows and the house because that's what it's all about is. Start helping one, teaching one, you know, uh, spreading the knowledge, spreading the love. And, you know, people need it because let's face it, man, people struggle every day. Every day is a struggle yeah. for a lot of people. A lot of people don't have it like, you know, if you're rich or if you got a lot of money. Even even them people, they have their own problems in their own mind. They might not be poor, but the poor people still have so much of a struggle to even get to that level. And only few get to that level. People well, it's, it's, it's funny. It, it's funny that you said that because that you make a really, really good point. You know, um, and before I get this point, you know, going, I, I just want to say that you know, I, you know, of course, I owe everything to God, and I know that that as far as the King of Fashion Show is concerned, as far as you and I working together, you know, I know that God put uh, put everybody, you know, in, in where they need to be, and I know that God put me, you know, in your life, and, and the same goes, you know, for you, uh, you know, where we're concerned, and. and you know, and I know uh, he makes everything possible. So, you know, I take no credit where, where you know, credit is due or, you know, uh, I just do, you know, know that, you know, God, you know, God, God provides and God, you know, definitely puts you in, in the situation that you need to be in as, lo- as long as you allow God to do that. That's right. That's right. You know, I think the whole concept, you know, came from God. That's how, that's what people, man, that's, that's why even with my health, you know, people ask me, well, man, uh, you got to slow down and say, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You just got out the hospital. You just had a heart attack in the hospital. I go, yeah, you know, I had multiple heart attacks in my sleep. And they say I died and came back. That's what they say. But you know what I say? I say it's God that brought me back. That's why I'm still alive. I'm here right now for the simple fact because of God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking on this phone right now. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be. That's right. And and you know what? And and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, um, you know, what you just said right now is, is, you know, is very humbling and it's very, you know, good to hear that because people get to a certain point, you know, in their life and, and that be, you know, success in their life or whatever the case is, you know, they tend to forget, you know, about God and, and you know, they, they feel like, you know, hey, I, I did this all myself and I put the hard work in, but, but you know what, they fail to realize that, that it's not them so much, it's God, it's God making it possible, you know, for you to do what you're doing, you know, you have, you know, two arms, you have two legs and you have, you have that, you know, for the grace of God, because there's a lot of people out there that, that, uh, that don't have that. And when you see that on the street and you see someone struggling and, you know, they're limping around, you know what I mean? Sometimes we, we walk around with blinders on because we're so into ourselves, you know, that we can't really see really what's going on, you know, in the world and the problems that are happening. But when you see that, it humbles a person and you understand that your situation you know, is really, really good, you know, because you see somebody else in their situation and what they're going through. And it's hard to do that sometimes, you know, when you're just flying high and you're feeling good. So in, in a sense, you have to always keep that, you know, in your mind on the daily and keep God, you know, on your tongue, just like I'm doing now. And I'm not afraid to because, you know, I wouldn't be here either, you know, because I've been through some, you know, some stuff in my life where I've had to just, you know, pull my Bible and, and take that Bible and just say, you know, God, redirect me with what I'm supposed to do because you never know what one day from the next, you know, what's going to go on in your life. And, and, and that's how I live my life, brother, you know, point blank, period. And I'm not afraid to, you know, to say that because, you know, I am a man of God and I, you know, and I thank God, like I said, for, you know, for everything, each and everything and everybody that he puts in my life, you know, including, you know, you, everybody. I, I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, you never know what happens to yourself, especially when it comes to health or when it comes to just living. You know, you can get in a car crash tomorrow. You can get ran over by a car. You can anything can happen to any yeah. of us or to any of our loved yeah. ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. until it ha- until it happens to you, and, and you know that you are on the verge of being dead or on the verge of 
not here anymore. It right. changes. It changes your whole life. It changes the, your outlook on life. It changes the outlook on my life, man. I ain't gonna well, lie. I see a change. It, it, I, see it, a, it, I see a beautiful change in you right now, and, and I don't mean that, you know, uh, you know, uh, in a you know. It, this had to happen in order for you to, you know, to go where you need to go in your life. And sometimes, you know, that situation happened to you because that was God, you know, knocking. And sometimes God has to knock and, and, and in order to do that for you to realize what your purpose is in life and what your situation is. And you look at right. everything different from that point because you've seen the light, you know, King, when that happened and God is shining on you. And I'm telling you, I feel the energy. And I'm and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for myself. You know, I'm just you know, I, I'm I'm telling you that because I know and I've been around you, and it's 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 blessings after blessings. Now, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And and you know, to reiterate on on all that, you know, everybody was asking me about the movie, the Machiavelli movie that I'm doing and whatnot, and is it coming out and what whatever you know on that tip. To me, I'm gonna keep it totally real. Before I had the heart attack, um, I, I was stopping all production on the movie. People, people asked why. Well, well, my friend, you know, played a big role in that movie. His name was Big Psych. So rest in peace, the Big Psych. So I actually stopped everything when Big Psych died, man, because it took a lot out of me, man. He didn't die. So that's the reason why I had stopped production on Machiavelli. It wasn't until I came out of that hospital alive. I have to let it be known to the world, and I still have to let it be known to the world of, of our experiences. We're not just Tupac, but also big psych, you know. You lost a part. Uh, so you lost a part of. You lost a part of you with your with your good friend. He was a he was a very very important part to the puzzle that you're putting together with this beautiful you know story and this movie that's coming out. And I know when it gets done, it's going to be you know iconic. You know, it's going to be, you know, epic. It's going to be incredible, you know, and, and that's okay because things happen for a reason. And I know one thing, I know that good things come when you wait. And you've heard that expression before, and I'm telling you, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible. And I'm, you know, I'm willing to wait. And I know everybody else out there that's listening is willing to wait because good things come when you wait. And it's, it's not rushed, but it's going to be done right. It's going to be authentic. And I know... And, you know, when this comes out, it's going to be the right time. It's going to be on God's time. That's right. That's right, Lord. I'm glad you said that. And also I want to ask you another question, Lord. you got some things coming up, and it's a special situation. You can hear it right now. You know, I know we said it on, you know, another uh, platform that we were on this week because we're letting it be known now. There's something special coming. It's kind of like shaking. It is shaking right now, folks, and, and you can probably feel – uh, the vibration of it, and you know what I'm talking about, Mr. L.A. You, you're talking about the earthquake, aren't you? Because I can kind of feel man, it coming right now. Man, I can feel it on the Richter scale. scale, man. Everything's moving right now, man. You know what I mean? In California, it's shaking right now. Tell us about that, Lloyd. Shaking and baking. Well, you know, we're working on this project. You know, uh, DJ King of Gaffin, along with myself, um, you know, we're getting together. You know, we've got, uh, you know, his, you know, style, my style. We're incorporating some music, and, uh, you know, we've got some tracks right now that we're working on, um, you know, several different tracks that we're working on right now, um, and I'm telling you, I'm just really, really excited about, you know, working alongside of him and, and uh, you know, his knowledge to, you know, to the music and, 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 and my background and, and, and just being able to, you know, get our two styles and ideas, and, and there's no... Uh, there's no egos involved. It's just just making music and letting the music tell the story, and that's really what you know. This is all about is is just getting together for the love of music and and, and just allowing the music to do what the music does, man. And, and, and bringing great people together in on these projects, man. And and uh, we've got some really really you know exciting music and 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 different music. You know, we're not uh, you know we're not thinking about you know anything other than just you know letting the music, you know, do what the music does, man, and, and, and that's where we're at with that right now. I let the music definitely speak for itself on it. The name of the group, folks, is called Earthquake. It's uh, Earthquake consists of myself and Mr. Lloyd L.A. Elves. Uh, believe it or not, everybody, I always ask everybody, what do you think Lloyd does? 
you know, in the group earthquake. This is before, you know, them knowing about it. Of course, they're going to know about it once you know, the music drops and all that, and they're going to know his position in earthquake, what he does, you know. So I'll tell people, do you think Lori's a rapper? Do you think he's a rapper? Is he rapping? <laughs> and they'll look at Lori, and then they kind of like look up and down. Mm, I don't think so. He don't look like a rapper. I go, you're exactly right. He's not a rapper. So then they automatically think, okay, maybe uh, maybe he's a singer or something. Well, uh, no, he's not a singer, but he is a singer. That's right, he is a singer. So uh, the incredible Lloyd Elves, uh, you know, he's not just a producer, he's also a singer, and he is the lead singer of the group called Earthquake. And, of course, uh, Earthquake is going to be coming out with the first single here in a couple months. I'm just going to let the cat out the bag right now, you know what I mean? So I'm letting it out the bag. Uh, I think he left the bag out of the cat. I think he left the bag out of the cat, man. I think I left the bag out of the cat, and the cat came back into the bag and escaped. Oh, like, man. What happened? Right. Oh, right. man. Right. DJ Ninja. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, maybe we'll get Ninja on there doing, a, doing something. Even if he does a, a little interlude for us, he'll be part of it, huh? And I'll tell you one thing. It's, you, you tuned into the number one, you know, spitfire right here, man. Because why? We have DJ Ninja in the building right now with along with King of Fast and Lloyd Elves and uh Ninja, what's going on with you, brother? How you feeling over there? Man, I'm feeling lovely over here. I'm feeling so lovely. Just listening to y'all chop it up, man. You know, I mean it's just a it's a blessing to just I have y'all on my line. So, you know, I'm just listening it's to y'all blessing. chop it up, how history being made, mm-hmm. you know, I mean how Tupac came in, you know, I mean, hey man, we just going with the flow, we getting it done, baby. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just loving it. Yeah. Man, you're keeping yeah. the energy going. I mean, we, man. We love the energy. I, yeah. I, it, it's earthquake right now. It's riveting. Riveting. Yeah. Riveting uh, situations happening. And, it's crazy. The know, views uh, are going up. I'm looking at the numbers. It's going up right now. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy right now. So, you know, who all on this line, you know, I mean, you're, you're being a part of history right now <laughs> you know we, we well, we're gonna open up the lines I, th- I think we should open up the lines should we open up the lines now ninja did you want to open them up and kind of like start getting some uh you know uh, uh, interaction with the people um open up the live then let's see here let me ask my co-host if we can open up the live Okay. Okay. And while while he while you're asking the co-host, while you're asking the the co-host, I'm going ahead and you know answer one of the questions that that you asked me, Ninja. Everybody always talks about oh, the Tupac oh, situation. Yeah. How I how well, I know yeah. Tupac and what the relationship is with Tupac and where did it go to and where is it at right now? You know, it's in the heavens right now in his relationship spiritually. And first and foremost, uh, you know, it was a situation that wasn't in the beginning towards like it was friends. You know what I mean? Just like me and Lloyd LA, I was a ninja. It wasn't something like I, I hooked up with Tupac when he was big already. When I had him on my first record in 1993, 94, it was called Hitworks, and Hitworks was on a tape. It was a cassette tape. It was black and white. I'm looking at it right now because I pressed it up black and white with a Xerox machine. You know what I mean? Wow. A cassette tape. Yeah, I have the original copy right here. And it wasn't until, like, 96 that that record was, like, fully, you know, barcoded with, you know, a UPC code. If you look at the original one cassette, it, it had a place for the UPC car, uh, barcode, but it's, like, all white because, you know, I didn't have a deal yet for that until it later came out to Arrogant Bonafide. Now, Arrogant Records was a, a label that was put, used to put out a group called 5150 for Marin City and, uh, and myself, you know what I mean? So everybody was from Marin City, from where Tupac's from, you know, as far as where he lived, too. He lived in Marin City. So the Marin City label uh, was ran by Kendrick Wells, which was Tupac's best friend, you know what I mean? And later he became his assistant to start Machiavelli Records. But that never happened because of, of, of course, the tragedy of Tupac. But, uh, yeah, me and Pac, we go back to them days, you know what I mean, of growing up in the Bay Area, because that's what we all grew up at. Of course, we were under the, the screens of Shock G, the incredible Shock G, who taught me how to make beats in the Shock G, Mr. Humpty Hump. They shot out to a big Humpty Hump out there making money like Donald Trump, Humpty Hump. So that's where we come from, you know, and if you were from the Bay Area in the early 90s, 
you would have met Tupac too. It's not like an all awesome. You know, now people think, nah, you didn't know Pac like it's like it's unbelievable. Nah, but if you're if you're from Cali and you're you were active in the nineties, you're gonna meet Tupac no matter what. I don't care what anybody says, especially if you were from the Bay Area. It wasn't until later on that me and Pac hooked up again in LA when he was signed with Interscope and I was there for the Me Against the World album. Almost every session I was there. Me against the world. You know what I mean? And uh, shout out to all the people that came in and played guitars and, and all the uh, songs, you know, Stand the Guitar Man. You know, there were sessions sometimes that I wasn't even uh, on, but I was just there because the cast would call me and say, hey, uh, I'm going to Tupac's uh, session. You want to come? Oh, yeah, cool. That's my dog. I'll go over there and, you know, hang out and drink a little bit because that's all we used to do was uh, be there drinking. Of course, the blood smokes were well, and nobody knew what his blunt was, but Tupac knew what a blunt was because I've never seen that shit until I seen Tupac and Layla. Shout out to Layla, you know, uh, rolling these big old fat blunts that look like they were just, you know, the the silly blunts, and you know, they would take out all the stuff in the middle and, and roll the blunt on it. But nobody knew what that shit was back then. I was only like 19, 20 years old. That shit wasn't even popular in California. Of course, now everybody rolls that shit, right? But. Pac and Layla were the, one of the first people that I ever saw rolling blunts ever, ever. Wow. Maybe like 10 years later, you, you see people rolling blunts 10 years later. That's a true story. You were witnessing history. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would see, because, you know, there would be... Uh, real, uh, talk, you know, those little... real talk, real talk, real talk. Yeah, true if I talk. You know what I mean? So you would see the ashtrays. They would be filled up with all this, like, you know, tobacco in it that was inside the Phillies blunts. I think it was the Phillies blunts back then. I don't even think the Vegas were around. Maybe Vegas were around back then, but it was the Phillies blunts that were being manipulated into these humongous big joints. <laughs> and they would get passed around. When they get passed around in the studio, it got passed around at least, it went around at least five times, and then it was over with. Like, mm-hmm. like, like you about to hit the um, you about to hit on the tour with the Chi Chen Chong, right? You talking about big blunts? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, but what's crazy is, you, you know, for something like that to go around like five times, that that's pretty good. You know, what I mean, that's pretty good because we're talking not just like I would say the size of a building. Like, let's say the size of a building of like your room. Everybody has like the same kind of circumference in a room unless you're living in a million dollar house, right? So let's just say that whole room times three with people like on the wall, like how, how Lloyd just said, like a fly on the wall, but they were all you know next to each other. So in the course of the studio, there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, about 30 to 40 people in the room. And this wow. room circulates five times, maybe four. And, you know what I mean? Maybe four. But I'm, I'm using five to kind of like round it off. I know it wasn't more than five times that that went around. Well, I think they were all following the rules, right? Because if you sat there for too check, long, you probably wouldn't go around five times. I think it was like hit it and pass it, right? Hit it and pass it. Fast. Yeah. Uh, hit it fast. Hit how it how fast it was. Fast, yeah. And the right two people, sessions. If, they, if they were there, it would have been over. And those were the Tupac sessions. That's why when I see all this shit about, you know, when All Eyes on Me, the movie, my mom invited me to go see the movie. I said, man, I don't need to go see nothing that I already witnessed and actually lived. You know, I'm right. looking, at, looking to tell a story, and I'm probably, I'll probably get mad at it at the end of the day because they wasn't there. I was there. Why do I want to go see something uh, of history that I was already in? You know what I mean? To get mad because it might not be how history was. Right. So, Later on, I waited, I waited for that movie to come out on the on the web, then I streamed it for free. <laughs> oh, man. You know what I mean? Because because the family didn't approve of that movie. They didn't, they were upset that people were in that movie that they didn't want in the movie. I'm not even going to say no names, but oh. at, the same, at the same time, that's the, the reality of it. How do I know? Because I know the family personally. You know what I mean? Man, all I want to say, man, I mean, yo, y'all, I, I just want to tell y'all right now, man, this is history going down, man. You know, we talking about the Machiavelli movie, you know, with the Tupac, you know. I mean, yo, y'all, y'all, y'all make sure y'all tune in and check out that, man, definitely, man, for the Machiavelli movie with DJ King Assassin, yeah. So you're editing that movie, right, or you're the director? 
Well, I'm the producer, director. We have uh, the creator of the soundtrack, Mr. L.A. Lloyd. He's kind of like overlooking the soundtrack. So if you want to get on that soundtrack, you kind of like got to ask Lloyd over there. He's like in charge of that over there. But, of course, you know, we all are a team when it comes down to it on, you know, submission. So it goes through a process to, to be a part of the soundtrack. And for those of you that are interested in becoming a part of the soundtrack, you can hit us up and you can, uh, you know, actually email us submissions at Machiavelli at 982thebeat.com. That's right, Machiavelli at 982thebeat.com. And with your submissions, you know, they're open. They're open for anybody that has love for Pac and anybody that has some good music that can do a tribute for Tupac or, or Tupac-related type of music, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, it's open for the public, too, as well, because this is something special that we're doing. You know what I mean? Right, it's just, right. It's, it's Absolutely. Tupac. It's just for him. Okay, so, so what yeah. made you wanted to want to create this movie? Well, you know, like I said, it was because I wanted to tell my story because all the other stories that were out there, they were dope and everything. Don't get me wrong. I don't take nothing from anybody what they create. You know what I mean? But I wanted to tell my side of the story of what I witnessed when I was around him. Just like, you know, I leaked one story and it hit Billboard because, you know, the authentication of the story was ran through Interscope to find the authentication of the story Well. Well, what are you saying? So what are you saying? Well, you know, my stories are 100 percent legit when I say, as I was right. there. So, what does facts. Billboard do to to authenticate? Yeah, facts. So, what does Billboard do to authenticate the story? You know, they talk to Tom Wong, they talk to Interscope, and they mention my name, and of course, the story. They what I said was pure facts about their mama, because I was a part of that whole situation as well, which people don't know because the credits ain't on there because the original credits were never stipulated on Dear Mama. I did the scratching that had to be taken out because Yo-Yo's part of the scratching had to be taken out for the simple fact part. Pat Charnay would not clear the sample. Tupac comes in the studio the next day. He's mad. I said, what's happening, Pac? What's wrong? He's like, man, uh, we have to take out the scratching. I'm like, damn, this is cool. I ain't tripping. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm not tripping. If you didn't like the scratching, don't even use it. I'm not tripping at all. He's a not fast and it ain't that, man. Uh, Pat Charnay wouldn't clear the sample. She went clear. I said, Pat Charnay, ain't that Ice Cube and Yo-Yo's manager? He's like, yeah, man, they, they didn't let us use it. So I could right, see why right, Pat was right. upset. At first I thought he was upset at me because maybe, you know, he didn't, just didn't like the scratching after all and taking out. But then I knew it was something deeper than that because he's not like them. He's not like the type of person to be mad about a performance. So just like erase it and keep on stepping if you don't like something. But it, this was deeper. It was because... Ice Cube and Yo-Yo are friends to him. They were friends. Remember, at this point, Tupac wasn't famous like that. Your mom and all this stuff wasn't now. He wasn't famous. He he was just famous for, like, the, you know, poetic justice and stuff like that for the movie part, and he had a certain amount of claim for, you know, Tupac and his name, and, and I Get Around was just barely becoming the shit at that point. So there was still, you know, I, I don't know. I think, to tell you the truth, I, I do think that, you know, Cube knew about the shit and he just didn't want to, you know, clear the sample. It could have been the label, too, that said we don't want to pay that shit. So I can't really blame it upon and, and use relationships like why didn't you use it and be upset at any of them because I don't know. I just know that it wasn't cleared. To me and Tupac, it seemed like it was the end of the song. That's what we thought. We thought it was like it can't be the same. It ain't never going to be the same because we had to take out uh, Yo-Yo's part. You know what I mean? The scratching on that part. You know, uh, got me a down woman on my team, but it wouldn't be a damn thing without a woman. So that was the part in the hook. Just like the early 90s when you would do songs, almost every song had a hook from somebody else of another song. That's how we made songs in the early 90s. You know, it had a lot of scratching in it, had a, had a lot of other people's verses in the in the hooks. So to make a long story short, uh, that never happened with that scratching, and they had to damn near scrap the song, but came up with a singing hook instead. And here we are with the original uh, Dear Mama turns into the new version of Digital Mama, the, the new version of Dear Mama. So what you hear is actually not the original version that, that everybody's used to. It's a, it's a newer version. I have the old version. You can hear the old version of Dear Mama. You know, if you go, if you search it on Billboard, you'll see that I gave the original song to Billboard to print the story. 
you know. So, uh, you know, it's a certified story backed by Tom Wally and Scope, everybody, you know what I mean? So, uh, for me, this is why I'm doing the movie Machiavelli, because I have more stories like that with Tupac that people don't know about. Like, how do you get that story? That's a, that's a story about one of the most iconic songs in history that I was there a part of, man. And and if you read Billboard on the, on the interview that I did with Billboard, you'll, you'll read the whole thing. And, and, and that's what this movie is about, because it's not just me. It's other people that have these type of stories that you don't know about. So it's a movie you want to see. It's a, it's a, it's a documentary. It's not even a movie. It's like real shit of real people that knew two parts that are telling their story that you never knew. Right. And, and that's the same thing, you know, and that's bouncing back to my story back in Trinidad when I DJed for Carnival. I was one of the main DJs that was DJing for those thousands of people. And nobody don't know that I'm under the, under the scene. Do you know what I'm saying? So, exactly. you know, and back, so, back so to your story, so you know, back to Pat. Exactly. There's so many important people like yourself that, you know, credited into history without being credited, you know what I mean, for what you've done. And to me, I never was the type of person to even trip off that, especially back in the days with even the stuff I did for Easy e scratching and all that. You know, some credits never showed up or surfaced to them to this day on, on some of the stuff that I did. But I wasn't tripping off of it, you know what I mean, because – there's reasons why I wasn't tripping off of them. And I'll get real deep into a lot of that stuff in my history when, when I do my own autobiography uh, movie, you know what I mean? But for now, it's Machiavelli that I got to get that story out to a lot of people and tell a lot of people's other story about that that they have to share. So it's kind of like a mixture between my stories and other people's stories, but in a similar type of uh, view. So it's a view of people's stories of what they have of Tupac that's something you never heard before. Because it's special. It comes from people that are special, that were special in Tupac's life, that were special in helping them come up, that are real family too, blood family, all the way down to friends that were close to them. People that look up to Tupac too. We're not going to forget about even people that are influenced by Tupac. You know what I mean? So it's a whole array of beautiful things about Mr. Machiavelli, the right. Don Caluminati. So, Tupac, so what do you do? So, King, would you be, um, like, featured in the movie? Will you be acting in the movie, or you got people to act in it? Well, see, I got people to act in it in certain parts of the movie. It's, it's like I said, it's a documentary. It's not really a movie, full movie, like we're, we're taking it from point A to point B and full acting all the way through. No, there's, there's recreations in the movie, just like I said about everybody passing the book. I want people to actually visualize and see what what I what I you know experienced being there. So on some parts I'm gonna have to recreate that and go to a studio and position everybody how everybody was positioned and Tupac talking and showing exactly how it was. You see what I'm saying? So there's gonna be some parts that are gonna be recreated and most of the parts are gonna just be of people talking and, and telling me their experience and maybe we'll run a, a creation of, of their experience as well if it makes sense like that because I want everybody to get a clear picture of what his life was about and what we did and how people felt and, and right. what was being rolled in, everything. Everything to the last team. It's very special to me, and, you know, I have to do this. You know, I have to do this movie, and even even if I release it as a free movie, I'm going to release it as a free movie to download on a platform. And there's a new platform coming uh, that's going to be just like YouTube. We're excited about it. It's backed by DreamWorks. So that's already in tune right now. You know, working with DreamWorks actually with this movie. Oh, okay. So to have DreamWorks behind it is is incredible. DreamWorks so is we're getting very there. huge. We're getting for y'all that don't know what DreamWorks is, is a very huge production company like Paramount Pictures, and other things like that. So, you know, DreamWorks, that's that's big that's big salute, bro. I mean, that is huge right there, y'all. Y'all getting cuckoo, man. Kick fashion. Yes, sir. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Ninja. I still appreciate you, man. And uh, I appreciate you, God, and Lord Elves, and everybody that's tuned in right now, you know what I mean? And uh, it's special, man, to have a platform like DreamWorks behind you because, you know, it's for everything, not, and it's for everybody, too, you know, to – to have, because if I have it, and I know know you, you got it. You know what I mean? And if you're dope enough, you're going to be a part of it. That's all it is, man. 
See, that's how Tupac was too. Tupac would let anybody that had talent get on his shit or he do. Tupac never charged me for nothing. Nothing at all. When we did real bad boys and stuff like that and he did that for us, it was nothing even said about money. And I think that, that goes back not just because I was a friend of his for a long time, but it goes back because I've seen him do it for other people that he had just met. You know what I mean? So right, it wasn't just because he was comfortable with me and he knew me so long. Nah, he was like that, dude. He was, like, cool like that. You know what I mean? People don't understand. If you knew Pac and you had something, you showed it to him, he liked it, he'd hop on it. I thought, like, well, that's why he made so much music. He stayed living and breathing in that studio every day. With his shirt off. Yeah, he always had a shirt off. All the time. <laughs> I never seen Tupac with his shirt off. I mean, other people see him with his shirt off. I, I, I've never, like, I I can't, I don't even remember one time that Tupac had his shirt on when I was around him. He always had it off around me. We were in the studio. That's how he liked it. He liked his shirt off all the time. And not because he was showing off his tattoos or whatever. We didn't even, right. I didn't even look at his tattoos. I mean, I just see bug glass and all that stuff, but... You know, me and Tupac okay. were friends. He I mean, did that when he started rapping, you know? <laughs> when he started rapping, he needed to breathe. Because he know he right. bringing that heat. You feel me? He don't want no clothes on. Right. You know? He got the fan he on. Or, 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 without, and you know, and he didn't you know. care about what people thought about that. You know, he was just, you know, it sounds to me like, you know, he was so focused on, you know, what he was doing. You know, he's just who he is, and, and if you liked him, great. If you didn't, you know, he really didn't care. He just was who he was, and, and people, that's one of the things that people respected about him and, and that he was able to do that with through his music, and, and he had such an impact that uh, it became, you know, part of who he was. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And, you know, at the time, I didn't think that it was going to get to the level where I knew he was going to get to the level like, you know, like the ice cubes and, and ice teas and whatnot, but I never thought it was going to get to this type but of did, level as it being around the most you, iconic person in the world. Because he was a friend. And it's just like me, you, Ninja, or Lord, you know, you're working with somebody and, you know, you know they're, they're high in the game, they're doing their thing and making it happen and you're happy. You know what I mean? And but you would never think that it, it would, I, I mean, I would never think that it was going to get to this level to where it is right now as far as how much he, he's praised and how much, like, he's an icon. To some people, he's like a god, you know what I mean? And I tried to tell him he, he was just a regular person like me and you, but he was anointed with, with the gift of God to prophesize a lot of things. He was God's child. Here, to teach what he had to teach to show everybody that this is going to happen, you're going to live like this, yeah, this is a thug life. Living the thug life, this is how I feel because I'm going through so much pain. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. My mom's going to crack. She's doing bad, but she still has love for me, and she still put the hot plate on the on the table. So guess what? I had to get my, on my feet when I was older, and I had to bring money to the mailbox because it feels good selling rocks, putting money in your mailbox. So that's what Pac did, and that's, he, he wasn't afraid to talk about what he was going through in true life. Most people will hide that shit. They don't want to rap about that. They just want to rap about the bling. They want to rap about how successful they are and how many girls they got and all the pimping or, or the money that they got and the bling and stuff. But Pac wasn't like that. He was telling the truth of his of his real story. That's why it's felt. That's why people can feel that because they go through similar situations. Not everybody's perfect. You know what I mean? And he put that out there and he did it with mostly all the songs. Keep your head up. I but he was around. he was naked to the he was basically in a in, in a in a way he was naked to the world because you know and I mean that in the respect of if you allow yourself to you know fully you know be who you are and and not let anything you know stand in the way of that then you are naked in a sense because you're opening up yourself to criticism you're opening up you know the true self of who you are but that I believe is how everybody had a connection and got to know him because of that fact, because he allowed people to to know the true self of who he was, and he wasn't afraid to show that. Right. Exactly. And, you know, it was uh, it was lovely. It was it was a situation that, you know, felt good to work with Tupac, you know what I mean, because he was fast. And that was my main thing, because being a producer, you know, you deal with so many artists, but when you got somebody that really knows what they want to do and, and they have their plan, too, what they hear a beat, 
and already have that concept ready written in their head. That was too fast. He did it fast. Tell, tell us, excuse me. Tell us, tell us, uh, um, you know, if you can go back and you can tell us uh, maybe a session that you were working in and just his, you know, his work ethic, you know. I, right. I remember you telling me something about, you know, when he was working, um, you know, he had said something, you know, to the fact, don't worry about, you know, fixing anything right now or editing this or editing that. You, you, you said something to that effect, but, you know, tell us right. about one of the sessions, because you were in so many sessions, but just tell us, you know, briefly about, you know, how his work ethic was, right. you know, in a studio right. environment, if, if you mm-hmm. can let us know. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Let's hear about that. Well, see, with, with Tupac, he didn't want to waste no time either because he knew how who, how fast he was. He knew how fast he was in the studio, so he didn't want to waste any time. It's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to drop my vocals, and you drop your vocals, and you drop your vocals. Everybody's right right now. Don't worry about the mix. Don't worry about the engineer. He'll do that shit later. You know what I mean? Because we ain't going to waste no time right now. You're going to come in after him. You're going to come in after him. And once you do your vocals, we opt to the next song. Don't worry about the mixing. Don't worry about the mastering. They're going to do that shit later. You know what I mean? So that's how it was. And Tupac, uh, another session I remember where we did uh, real bad was it was from a soundtrack that somebody sent me a script to. Tupac left that script in like 10 minutes and wrote the lyrics down in like five minutes and busted in 15 minutes. That's how fast he was. You know, he was so, so focused. He was so focused. He was so on- focused. Right. Nobody, no obstacles. Yes. And a lot of people, they ask, was that song done for Bad Boy Entertainment and stuff like that? No. I never knew who a Bad Boy Entertainment was at that time early in life. So I named the song Real Bad Boys. You know what I mean? Because I got it off the TV episode Cops. I used to watch Cops all the time. I used to love watching that shit when they, you know, with uh you know, do raids and stuff and people selling drugs and they would get caught up and, you know, you kind of like a battle ram coming through or, you know, them raiding people or just on the streets, just busting people. And that inner city song came on, bad boys, bad boys. What you yeah. Do? What you do? yeah. That's, how I, that's yeah. how I came up with that concept. I came up with that concept and I called it bad boys. Then I put like a reel in front of it years later which made people think it was about bad boys, but it really wasn't in the beginning about bad boys. I made that shit up. I didn't know who a bad boy entertainment was at that point. You know what I mean? So it wasn't until later that people took it that way that we were talking about bad boy entertainment. But originally, no, that was my concept that I came up with, and I gave Tupac the script, and he wrote off of it. That's how that came to me. That's so true to music in general because when you listen to a song, not to go into too much detail, but, you know, you can listen to a song and what that song really means to that artist, you know, sometimes means something different to another right. individual. And that's just music in general. And sometimes you kind of get a, a laugh out of it because you say to yourself, oh, I didn't really mean, you know, that. But then you kind of go with it as well because people have a different, you know, feeling. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just God or whatever it is, but it wasn't intended to be that way. But when it came out, it wasn't even intended to be that way until like years later that, that the beat started happening. Then it fit right in where it almost was like it was for that. You know what I mean? So, well, if you, don't mind me going, if you don't mind me going in a different direction, you know, to flip the script, because we were talking about that earlier, um, you know, maybe – it's what God intended. Maybe it was meant to be, in, you know, in, in that in that sense because you were doing it and you were following everything and your purpose, and maybe that happened for that reason. You know, you know, you know what I mean. You don't know exactly. when you're doing something where it's going to go. Right, exactly, and that's exactly what it was, man. It was a situation like that, man, where that I truly believe that that that's what happened. You know what I mean? I mean, why why would it be like that? And why would it seem so like it was meant for that situation when it really wasn't our initial uh, stage of the music? It wasn't even known. That beef wasn't even alive. There was no beef at that time. You know what I mean? I never knew who a Puff Daddy was. I never knew who a right. the B I G was. It I think was part of the was, I, I think he was with Andre Harrell at that time doing stuff with like Mary J. Belize or something. You know what I mean? He wasn't even actually like, you know, I think he was with Ted Mack around them days. 
not even being yeah. as an easy surface. Yeah. Right. So there was a Bat Boy Entertainment, but I, I wasn't in tune to it like that was the label or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Because right. Cause, cause initially the song was, was done, you know, with, with my uh, title. I came up with the title. And it wasn't until like later on that title became seeming like it was a Bad Boy Entertainment disc. And it really wasn't meant, a, meant to be a Bad Boy Entertainment disc. It was meant to be, you know, just a, a remake of the song Bad Boys from Inner City Circle, from Inner City, the reggae group. Right. Well, that was what it was. Yeah. It was, until, it was until later years, later that that beef had just kind of like started, you know, becoming worldwide when people picked the song that me and Tupac did and be the mad bitch uh, into into claim that it was uh, a bad boy to this. That's an now, incredible was, story. Incredible, incredible story, you know, and uh, it just goes to show that, you know, God has a plan for everything that you do. And, you know, if you allow, you know, everything in your life just to flow, you know, in the right way, you know, it, it just, uh, you know, it amazes, you know, me and I'm sure a lot of people that are listening today, too, because I don't think it's just a coincidence that, you know, that happened or anything, you know, that you right. talked about today that's happened. These are not coincidences. These are, you know, this is your purpose. You're living your, you know, uh, your life the way, you know, God wants you to live it. And everything that's happening in your life is happening for a reason, like you always say, you know, um, I do believe that. Exactly. You know, people say... You know, you're living your dream, you're li- living this and that. And I don't think, it, even at that point, even when I was working with Tupac and stuff like that, to me, it wasn't a dream. To me, that was just reality, and these were my friends. You know what I mean? Because me and Tupac, we had a dream. You know what I mean? And to do me to do what we do, but we still weren't where we wanted to be at that time. You see what I'm saying? Right. You were just right. working towards that goal. You know, this is all before the death row days, all that stuff. You right. Know? And then everything else comes into play after that. And you all know the story from there, but there's a lot of stories that are like this that we're going to put in the Machiavelli movie to let people know of how it was and what it takes to get to that point of major stardom or super yes. stardom. And, and you know what's interesting to, to, to bring up a thought? You know, you had said something to the fact that when you and, uh, you know, Tupac were working on music, there was never any money, you know, thought of at the time. And, 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 you know, it wasn't really all about that. It was really, um, it sounds to me, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like, you know, you guys, you know, at the time you were, you were working off of your energy and you didn't really right. want to bring, you know, money at that particular time, you know, into the equation, because when you're doing music, you know, you have to be so focused on what you're doing and, and you don't really want to be thinking so much about the money, but, um, not to say when you do something that you love and you have a passion for, the money comes. And money I comes that from experience. You know, I know. It's funny that you say that because I think that was like the key to working with people because for some strange odd reason, it's always been in me and it's been in Tupac and it's also been in Shot G. And Shot G is kind of like a person that kind of like put everything together for everyone and make them successful. But And Shot G would tell me too. Because I told Shock one time, just like I asked you, I said, uh, you know, what made you want to work with DJ King and Fast and stuff like that? And, and he just told me straight up off the top. He would tell other people because other people would ask him, and he'd be, man, because I love Assassin's energy. I love his energy. It's like, you know, how can I not work with Assassin? You know what I mean? Because it was the energy that Shock G loved. Why, you know, I was put under Shock G's uh, wing to be – rolling with the underground when the underground has shows they would call me I would to this day you know well I think they stopped doing a lot of the touring now and they have a, a new young Humpty Hump now but you know the original digital underground you know uh, even after Pac died they would still call me up to certain shows and bring me out when they would do the tributes for Tupac I was there and they and would only the call brother, me that's the true brother that you are and, 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 I, and I know that everybody you know sees you know, that in you, and, you know, there's no way to, you know, to fake that, you know, um, your intentions, you know, were for the love of music and the love for being around, you know, great as yourself, and, you know, that's a beautiful, beautiful story, you know, in itself, because it just shows, you know, the true person that you are and the real person that you 
are, and there's no hiding behind, you know, any of that, man. So, you know, that's a beautiful, uh, beautiful quality. You know, that's a great story. You know, it just uh, it makes a person feel good. Because... Well, I think, and the good part about that is, you know, because that was done later on in, in life, of course, when, when you can feel more easier, and we do have – that real footage going in on the movie of me and Digital on the ground, you know, for the tributes for Tupac, that's, that's going to be in there, you know, the real footage uh, of that. So um, it's good footage, you know. It's not super clear, but it, it's good enough to know and to hear and to see the love that we have for Tupac with me and Digital on the ground. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm excited for it, and this is just stuff that y'all need to see out there because I want to show y'all this stuff, and, you know, because a lot of people – they know me, but they don't know the side of the Tupac with me. You know what I mean? They can see the DJ King of Sounds and mixing host tapes and stuff like that. And I, to tell you the truth, I have stopped talking about that a lot because it hurts me to talk about it. You know what I mean? As far as I'm, I could talk about it now and kind of, you know, not not let it get to me, but at the same time, it's, it's special to me. You know what I mean? And 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 during, you know, it took like 20 years to get over it to get over it because it, it, it's a it's a sad story, man. That's yes. Nice, yes, and all mm-hmm. the situations that you've dealt with in your life have 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 shaped you, you know, uh, into who you are, you know, at this present moment today. You know, we're just we're all just better versions of ourselves as as we get into life and go through situations. We become, you know, better versions of ourselves through God as we learn, you know, as we make mistakes and and, and we see people for truly, you know, who they are. And I know that people see you you know, for who you are, and, and you make such an impact on, you know, so many people and so many people's lives, and, and, and that's because you are real, you know, and, and, and I'm able to see that. I know a lot of other, you know, uh, fans and people that, you know, that have worked with you and, and uh, you know, in this world, you know, they, they, they see that, and it's a pleasure, you know, uh, having you, you know, on the air tonight. You know, DJ Ninja, I know, you know, he feels the same way, and, and, and I, you know, from the bottom of my heart, you know, to keep it real, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful you know, for everything that, you know, uh, that you and I do together and, and through the grace of God, man, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I'm living, you know, day to day, um, you know, just, uh, you know, enjoying every, you know, every moment, man. And, and, uh, and, and I really appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate you, uh, DJ King of South. I appreciate, you know, uh, DJ Ninja in the background there and, and such a, you know, such a great, um, you know, story and, and, uh, just, I'm telling you, man, I, I can't say, I can't stress it enough, man. <laughs> exactly, man. You know, just like Tupac says, life goes on. And life goes on, and for the affiliates that, that continue to hold the torch for Tupac, and not only that, for the kids that are doing music, even non-related to Tupac, we're living history right now. That's what people don't understand. Like, when I was doing this stuff back in the days with Tupac, that was history right there. We just didn't know it. Me, Tupac, Shock G, Money B, anybody, you know, Spice One, uh, we didn't know that. Too Short, you know, E-40. Right. We all didn't know what we were doing in the early, MC Hammer. We all didn't know in the early beginning that it was going to get to this level. I so remember when Hammer, the, Hammer's the, a good the friend of mine, you know what I mean? And go ahead, go ahead, Lord. The question is, who really knows? That is the question. God. Really, nobody, nobody knows besides God what, what you're living. But I can tell you right now with whatever somebody is doing right now, and if you become successful at it, that's what you're in the making. You know what I mean? And, and that's the part that is always special to everybody is the history in the making because that gives young kids hope that if I can do it, you can do it. That's why I'm still here. That's why I'm still alive. That's why I'm still telling you. That's why I'm still preaching this to the kids. That's why I'm still preaching uh, the importance of God to be in your life, the abundance. We're still here for a reason to tell the kids this is what it took. This is what happened. Even though we lose people on the way, on the way up, soldiers on the way up, we're still here. So we have, it's, it's our responsibility because we're still living, breathing human beings to teach that to people of what we went through. Each one teach one. It's, Praise it's God. Important. Praise God. Praise, it's important. Praise to, God, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's important for everybody to know that because right now, just this phone call is historic because it has all of our feelings in it and we're talking about it. And there's probably yeah. a young kid right now that's on the phone listening to this and like, you know what, you're right. And, and it motivates them to, to do music, motivates them to maybe be the next 
superstar, the next whoever. I'm not going to say the next Tupac because nobody can take his place. You know what I mean? Right. Just like before that, nobody could have took MC Hammer's place. Nobody could have took Michael Jackson's place. Nobody could have took Prince. Nobody could have took Rakim's place. Everybody has their place. Eminem's place. Eminem's place. Now, now, do you want to make that history? Do you want that place? It's going to take a lot of hard work because it ain't easy. I'm going to tell you, it ain't easy. Well, you, yeah, have you, you, have to, you have to live and you have to live and breathe, you know, this music. And, and, and what I said before, you know, it's pretty deep because I say that a lot. I say, let the music tell the story. And what I mean by that, you know, I mean two things by that. You know, when you're creating, you know, sometimes you don't really know what, you know, uh, what's going to happen. You may take out a, you know, a horn section or you may take out, you know, a, a hi-hat in between, you know, tracks. And as you're building, you're just letting things flow. Um, you know, the music is going to, in the end, tell the story. And what else I mean by that is what you're talking about right now. You're talking about a story that goes along with the music. People hear the music, but they don't really know the creation and what it took to produce that track and, and, and everything that you had to go through, obstacles to get that music to where it was right. And I know you, DJ King Assassin, you will do whatever it takes to make that track right, and you won't put something else, put something out unless you know it's right, you know. And and, exactly. and that's part of that's part of the story, you know, of your life. Because I know that everything that you do, you put your heart and you put your soul into it, and it's not just about the money. It's about making something that you know they will listen to for years to come and 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 enjoy. You know, exactly. the body of work, which you have over exactly. you know, and you, 60 hours. Right. And you know what? And, and you can't forget the people that helped you get to that point. You can't forget. Absolutely. You can't yep. forget your family. You can't forget your family who helps you out, you know, in, in things. You know what I mean? Like, I can't forget my mom. I can't forget my brother right here who's with me that was with me in the early times of making music and, and supporting me and going to shows and, you know, having a good time and dancing and letting people know that, hey, man, I'm having a good time and I'm dancing. I'm right here with my brother. I'm, I'm good. You know, it, it, that type of stuff is powerful to the individual to have that type of support. I was fortunate enough to have family behind and rest in peace to my dad. And he went to one show of mine before and he was selling T-shirts. He right. passed away of cancer. It's been dead over 10 years, probably longer by now, but it always seems like yesterday to me. So, you know, I God thought that, uh, soul. God bless his soul right now. We, you know, we take a, we take a minute to, uh, you know, to pray for your father and, 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 and everything that, uh, that he instilled in you, you know, through your life. And I know that he's right here with you and every step of the way, you know, with what you're doing in your life. And I know he's smiling right now, you know, because he's very happy, you know, that, you know, you have, you know, uh, gone through obstacles and jumped over obstacles and, 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 and everything that you've done in your life, you know, you've never been a quitter and, and, and you keep going and you keep going and you keep going one step followed by another step. And that, you know, is a beautiful, beautiful, you know, story in itself because, you know, that is your blueprint and that is what you were, you know, made to do. And you and you know, I know your father wouldn't want anything else for you. You know, he, he got you your first take that, you know, I seen that picture, right. you know, your first boom mm-hmm. box and, and, yeah. I know how that made you feel. Oh, man, that was that was everything to me when I seen that boom box when you got me that boom box for Christmas. Uh, the picture's still up on Facebook, and, you know, you can look at that picture and see that I was the happiest kid on earth on that. You know what I mean? I see the smile on your face, man. And, and, and that right there, you know, uh, told me when I seen that smile on your face, man, it was a, you know, it was a kid that just, you know, won the lottery. Right. Yeah, that's how it felt. Yeah. He could have gave you know, a lot of rewards back then, but it felt like, you know what I mean? It was like watching him. You know how you, you get that special, like right. you really want to, like you really right. want to, and you seemed out that special candy that had that invitation right. to, to come through the factory. I felt like that was the factory right there. You know what I mean? Like right. that was everything right there. That was everything to me. And, you know, and, and, and that's one thing I, I want to just say, that's one thing I love about you, man, because, you know, you're able to, um, you know, be humble enough you know, in your life and, and, and all the wonderful people and relationships that you have and all the people that you've been able to work with, I don't think there's one person out there that doesn't like you. And if they don't, that's their problem because, you know, you are who you are, man, and, and everybody sees what a, you know, what a great guy you are and how humble you are. And, and uh, you know, that is, that is a, you know, that is a great quality. And I don't think that, uh, you know, any money 
you know, um, would change you. Uh, I know you've been very successful, and, and, and that's never changed who you are. So that is a beautiful thing, you know, in itself right there, if I just might add, you know what I mean, because, you know, I see that, you know, and, and, and I respect that because, you know, money is a tool at the end of the day, and that's really all it is. It's the people around you that you influence. It's the, it's the family that you have that, that uh, you know, be it your kids, your mom, you know, uh, which is a, you know, beautiful, you know, person. And, and, and I got to say, man, you know, you're doing everything right, but you're doing everything right by God. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a blessed, uh, you know, situation, you know, that you're in right now because you allow God to, you know, to continue to guide you through your journey, man. It is a journey. It is a journey. And I thank you for that. And the same thing to you, Lloyd Elves, you know what I mean? Uh, your family, I mean, your family is like my family, you know what I mean? They look out for me. They, uh, man, they did their own record about me, man, their own document record, man. How crazy is that? I mean, I That's think right. you can explain that better than I can explain it because I'm still, like, in awe about that right now. Let people know about that. Well, I'm going to let you know about that. That's, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, really, um, I went to Nevada. It's kind of funny that, that you brought that up because I went to Nevada to get all these chocolate molds. Um, and if you, since we're keeping it real, and I always keep it real, there's no reason not to. You know, we we started going through boxes. You know, we bought uh, about 500 boxes of molds. I went to Nevada. Long story short, I got back. I started, uh, you know, putting all these boxes away. And as I was putting these boxes away, there was a box that kind of caught my eye. And I was looking at that box, and it was kind of a, you know, a different looking box from the other boxes. But when I'd open that box up, uh, I see that there was uh, some molds in there. Chocolate records. And wow. I said, wow, that's funny because I never seen it up in Nevada. It just kind of like popped out of nowhere. And then I think I had gotten on the phone with you, man, and I said, you know, hey, King, you know, I found uh, I found a bunch of uh, chocolate molds, you know, for records. And, and, and you were surprised, you know, uh, and that just tells me that that was meant to be. It was another situation that, you know, you know that, uh, that God, you know, put in our path because I had never seen wow. anything like that as well. And so we, you know, we put together, you know, these uh, these chocolate records for the King Assassin show, and uh, we're, we've got those right now. They're uh, they're definitely, um, you know, they're ready to go, and and uh, you know, we're going to be uh, on the street with these records. We're going to be blessing people with these records at different events, and and uh, you know, it's just something that really, um, you know, is going to be sweet, man, sweet, and and. You know, they you know what? Eat it, but I don't think they're going to eat it. I think they're going to put it up on their wall because I think it's something that you don't see all the time, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. That's crazy Maybe. because I, I had forgot about that part that it was actually, you know, something that was, like, meant to be because we didn't make these molds. No, I never ordered the molds. I don't even remember ordering these molds. I don't even think his family remembers ordering these molds. I think it was just miscellaneous molds that they probably had. That, that Lloyd just stumbled upon, or I don't even know how that story goes, but at the end of the day, that was something that Lloyd's uh, family didn't know, and Lloyd didn't even know himself, and it came out of, like, nowhere. And that's God. Just like that story we just talked about earlier, that, that song that I did with Tupac, you know, we named it uh, Bad Boys, Real Bad Boys. That right. wasn't intended for Bad Boy Entertainment. It came out of nowhere later that it, it seemed like it was... You know what I mean? So those are the different type of things uh, uh, right there with just that candy mold. I mean, where did that come from, Roy? Do you know? You know, actually, uh, I packed up all these boxes, man, and, and uh, you know, I had gone through all these boxes but never really seen this one particular box. I think that, that box right there got thrown in to the mix when we were just about to leave. He had found a few boxes, and he said, here. I found these boxes right here. I remember him saying that, and there was about 10 boxes. And that, that particular box was in with those boxes, so I never really paid too much attention. I figured they were probably just extras of what we already had. So, do, you think, um, do, you, do you possibly think maybe a time traveler came and uh, dropped you off that mold? I think maybe, I think maybe Miss Unshakable, I think she probably put it in there when I wasn't looking, maybe, or something. I'm not going to think right now. You know why I brought up? Uh, maybe, maybe we'll find the key like that, huh? Maybe we will find that key. And Maybe. Maybe, key. because, you know, she always, you know, likes to do little surprises and stuff like that. And, and I got to say, you know, um, I don't know what I would do without, uh, you know, 
Miss Unshakable Cindy Buentello. You know, she is uh, she is definitely you know she's my she's my right arm and and uh, and and everything to me. And I and I just want to mention her, you know, because she is a a, a big piece, you know, to this puzzle. And I and and I and I can't really stress enough, you know, uh, I love her, you know, dearly from my heart, and I'm and I'm just very thankful for her. And I just want to you know I want to shout her out. And I know you're always asking for you know for shout outs and Sometimes there's a lot on my mind, and I and I made a list, but she's definitely on the top of my list. Well, you know what? I'm going to shout out my brother right here, who I'm with, uh, Mr. Matt Dre. We all call him Matt Dre. You know, what I mean, uh, Matt is the name because he's over here sitting down with me. You know, and we're reminiscing. And Lord, he said that was a beautiful story that you had. But I got a story about my brother Matt Dre that that uh, special to me that I want to tell everybody about because he was Shot G's right hand man. You, you want to know why? And I don't know if he wants to say it right now and tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think beer drinking? Yeah, beer Budweiser drinkers. Uh, him and Shock were were you know big Budweiser drinking, and Shock G gave him like his noses. He gave him you know the thing that he wears, the little nose thing, Humpty Hump. I should say Humpty Hump. Yeah, Humpty yeah. Hump gave him you know uh, his own his own nose to to my brother, and and that meant a lot to my brother. And you know, and later on we we seen it on the front page of. Uh, of the news. Remember we seen it in the in the newspaper. He, yeah, the front page of the newspaper, man. It, wow. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and the dog the dog ate the humpy hump uh nose that he had. Did he eat the he ate it, huh? Yeah. Oh man, yeah, he ate it. Uh so we no longer have the humpy hump nose because it was ate by the pit bull. But um, yeah. but that's something that's something, you know, that's that's something in history that we'll never forget, you know, and and he was on stage. He was on stage with Shock G, my brother, man, and I'll never forget that. So I wanted to kind of share that, you know, story too, because that meant a lot yeah, to me just beautiful. to see that. You know what I mean? And uh, we had good times, a lot of good times in the past. But guess what, folks? Uh, we're talking about the past, but now it's all about the future. And I'm still here. We're all still here. So there's That's still right. more good stories to come. You know what I mean? Because I'm the type of person I don't want to live in the past or, 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 or you know what I mean, right. or, or get to know the past, but I'll let it be known like the interviews right now that are being recorded and, you know, jotted down in history and whatnot, but there's so much to come. As long as you're still breathing, as long as you still, you know, uh, can do things and create, continue creating. Right. And that's what we're doing right now because if it wasn't for Lloyd Alves right now, I probably wouldn't even go back into music or back into the King of Thousand. So I'm keeping it totally 100. If it wasn't well, for God that, I'm having hard to do. you in, in, in the position that you're in right now, and I know that God put me in the position that I'm in, and I owe it all to, you know, to God. And I think you had mentioned, uh, speaking about, you know, future and, and past, you had mentioned to me, um, you know, in a, in a vehicle, there's a, you know, there's a rear view mirror, and there's a rear view mirror, and it's smaller or, or maybe, maybe was that, maybe was that you that, that told me that? Was that you that you told me that? Maybe it was you, King. Uh, you know, there's a rear view mirror, and it's smaller for a reason because you're supposed to look at your past, you know, um, and, and not be able to see, um, you know, so so much all the time. But the front of the of the glass, which is the which is the front window, is a lot bigger because you're looking forward. Um, exactly. And that has really something to you know. Uh, that, that's something to say because that's that's really how you know we need to live our lives. You got you got to live your life staring in the rear view. You know, Tupac had a song called right. "Staring at My Staring at My Rear View." You know, through time because that's exactly what you got to do, man. You have to still look in that rear view to to be cautious to to learn to remind things. you, yes, and remind you and and to to remind you of what you learned exactly. You know, what I mean, that's what it, it you know because if you don't remember certain things that you did in life, then you you could repeat the same process over and over again. You don't want to repeat the same process over and keep on going back to jail. You don't want to keep on getting sick. You want to continue to eat right so that you don't die. All those different types of things, you have to know what got you into them places before and God brought you back so that you can look in that rear view and and remember, okay, if I do this, this is the consequences. This is going to happen. You're right. You You don't want to stay there and and, and think about, you know, mistakes that you've made in the past and, and, and live in that, uh, you know, in that realm. You want to look forward and, exactly. and, and go forward, you know. 
Exactly. That is, uh, that was a milestone in your life. You know, you just got to get over that hump, man, and keep it trucking. Keep it trucking. Yeah, that's right. You got to keep it trucking. And you know what? Uh, Once you learn that in life, then I think things roll a lot more easier and it become, you become more successful in what you're doing because now you know the obstacles where they're at. You know how to travel. You won't get lost in life. It's just like Google Maps, you know what I mean? And sometimes Google Maps maps ain't even correct. But but then you'll you'll go oh, if you end up going to that same place again, you'll you'll exactly know if it was something that was misguided or misdirected. You're not you're not gonna take that same route anymore in life. You're gonna take a different route, right? So what you do is once you know the routes in life and you know where you gotta go and you know it like the back of your hand, you begin to play this game much easier. It becomes a pass go situation and you're always collecting just like Monopoly. You know what I mean? You know where to go. You know where not to go and you know how to get through certain things when they are painful, too, because that's going to happen along life. We're going to lose people we love. We're going to lose. Be strong for your family. Be strong for the loved ones. You know, I mean, that's what it's all about. I think we're running out of time here, but Ninja, I'm going to hand it over to you, hand the mic over to you, my brother, and thank you for having us on the show, me and Lloyd, man. Thank we, you. Thank we you. Appreciate thank you. you so much. God bless you, brother, and, uh, you know, uh, a lot of great things are going to continue to come your way, and, uh, you know, you're doing a great job, man. We really appreciate you. Oh, man, I appreciate y'all, man, you know, definitely for being on the show, you know. Um, and I definitely want to work with y'all in the future, too, you know. So definitely y'all keep oh, linking with me. You want to come where you're at, you know what I mean? I know you want to come where, where we're at, too. So, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll kind of like stir it all up, you know what I mean? We're going to stir it all up like the Mac, and you're going to be over here, we're going to be over there, you know. We're gonna be man, be like, 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 like a big old pot of gumbo. Now. It would be like a big old pot of gumbo. He's pulling, he's pulling, he's gonna be pulling some ninja moves. Yeah, ninja moves. <laughs> man, look here. I'm, man, I heard I'm ninja just... have the turkey cheese card over there. He has the turkey cheese card and the tokens already because they didn't get rid of the tokens in Tennessee. No, they oh, did not. Oh man, you're right about that. And don't don't forget y'all that that and, I, and I you I know. I think we've got a reservation for him over there too. Uh, I, I think there's a reservation for him, man. Uh, I think uh, we made that the other day, man. They were, they were they were looking for him over there, but we're gonna figure all that out, man. I'm gonna get back mm-hmm. to my people. Oh, do we have the reservation at the mermaid house already? I think he does, mm-hmm. man. He does. I think the yeah. mermaid house is waiting for him. It's it's waiting for him, man. I was I was getting uh I was getting some GPS in my shoes, but I think that you had I was getting electrical shock from uh uh from, from that chain, the chain. you know. The chain, I had yeah. electric mocha, and then I was able to see what was going on, man. It was really crazy. <laughs> Indeed, and Ninja, are we opening the lines? We're just gonna kind of, uh, you know. Uh, oh well, I got a few more, everybody. few more questions, few more questions. You know, do you all have the time? Few more questions. Most I'm, definitely, most definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, all right. See y'all. That no, that's that's love. You know, that's love to the to DJ King Assassin and Lord Elves. You know, for showing love on the Sit Fire Show. You know what I'm saying? So you all know, man, I, I'm over here in the Memphis area, you know, and we be getting a lot of things going over here, you know, um, including my new radio station that I'll be DJing for in the Memphis, you know, W-U-R-E, fuck you mean, you know, that's what they call it, but it's really FM, you know, it's going down, man. So, you know, wow. they could get that at, wow. yeah, at www.memphisdons.com. Congratulations yeah. to you, man. Congratulations, Congratulations on, on that on that slogan. It's very creative. FM, Pre- fuck you mean. Oh, yeah. man, wow. That's yeah, man. So. How about that, man? How about how hey, creative that's, is that? Let's get a crap out there. Put a script on him, I think. What do you think? Man? I think he flipped the script on him. I think he flipped the script and put it, uh, turned it from AM to FM and then did an ACDC on us. He did a direct alternative current on us. <laughs> I think he did. I think he was pulling a, I think he was pulling a Tesla. He was pulling a Tesla with high fidelity. He had some high wow. fidelity Tesla moves, man. man he had some oh, high man. fidelity Tesla, 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 Tesla ninja moves. I think, moves, I, think I, I think they're doing the, the, the ninja dance in Memphis, Tennessee right now for that one. Everybody's dancing over there in Memphis, Tennessee, man. They're over there hanging with uh, Arrested Development. 
Arrested yeah, I think he's doing the ninja. The I think he's doing the ninja shuffle. I think he is doing the ninja shuffle. They said for him doing the Joe Ski Love. They're tired of the Joe Ski Love. They want to do the ninja dance. I think oh, he had man. one of those electric stock mochas from Seven Eleven, and I think but, he was doing the ninja shuffle in there. Well, I well, see that as, assassin and Lloyd. I tell you what, they could go and do the ninja shuffle to my mixtapes on my website. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. See? I got part one and part two of the reggae mixtapes. Oh, I'm about your mixtapes. What you got coming up? Part one and part two already got them online. Is at www.fitfireintl.weebly.com. So um. They could go on there and they could really like check out all my work and you know everything that I do, man. So that's definitely you know what we got coming up. We um we, we got some big things coming up, man. You know we got a couple more interviews. We got one more interview with um you know them boys from Atlanta, Georgia, Joey Breeze. Yes. That's him. Yeah. yeah. We got an interview yeah. with him. He's gonna be on our show coming up soon. So you know. We're working on that. Make sure y'all check me out too, man. Um, every Thursday, you know, on the radio station, you know, I have my own show for two hours on the block, doing um, you know, like mixing up with some reggae vibes and some island vibes, my own island. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah, man. It's gonna be from eight to ten, so y'all tune in from California. You know how we do, baby. West side, West Coast. You know. <laughs> yeah, popping the most. Yeah, the man. most right there. And thank you, Ninja, for having us on, man. You know, it means a lot to hey. me and Lloyd. You know, this this, uh, this whole entertainment business, all the way down to the radio, to the DJs, it means a lot to us, man. It means a lot to, oh, to man. be able to, you yeah. know, engage Absolutely. with Amen to that, people. man. Amen to it, that. It's only we love, love, man. Love I got it. We love talking to people. Yeah. 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 So I want to ask one, say, let's see here. What genre do you play most of time? Like, you know, like, like when you're partying and stuff, you know, what what do you like to play with? I like to play with the old school stuff, you know, because the old school stuff is actually like the, the real old school st- stuff to us in my age, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Because the old school stuff to kids nowadays is like Tupac and Biggie, but that wasn't the old school to me. The old school to me in hip-hop was like Big Daddy Kane and, yeah. and stuff like that. But when I when I say old school as far as what my parents used to listen to, I, I, I get down to that. That's what I get down to. I get down to what they used to listen to. You know what I mean? Some blues and stuff. Hip-hop. Blues, uh, funk, parliament, uh okay. you name it, man. Michael Henderson, Michael Henderson, wide receiver, uh, Lips Incorporated, you know, even the eighties stuff, even stuff like Devo. Uh, yeah, let's not even Lloyd will tell you, uh, man. We listen to Alabama, we listen to country, we listen to everything. Oh yeah, like, just no. See, I think all that's what stuff. I'm talking about. Yeah, music yeah, is yeah. Uni- universal, you know. Uh, everybody Bob needs Skaggs. to be listening to music. Bob Skaggs. Bob Skaggs. Exactly. Craft yeah, all that. Yep. Craft work, all that shit. You know, uh, the cats, uh, L.A. Dream Team, man. Uh, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Ice T. Uh, yeah, man. Gap band. Okay. Right, right. So, so let me ask you this. So, 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 assassin. So, assassin. Who, uh-huh. like, who in the big in the in 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 the industry? You know, like, like what we talk about with Tupac and everything. You know, who else you produce mm-hmm. for? Man, a lot of cats. And you know, uh, well, you can read it on the bio. You know, uh, Ice T. You know, the the names we had mentioned: Ice T, Wyclef. Like Clef Jean, you know, we talked about that earlier, you know, about the carnival situation because he, he loves the carnival so much, them parties that actually could be New York are called carnival parades too. So, you know, uh, uh, Roger Troutman worked with him, uh, Brother Lynch Hung, um, Cocaine. Um, who else we got on the list? Shock G, Digital Underground. Boy, there's so many. San Quinn, JT, the bigger figure. Um you name it. I know I'm missing a whole lot of other names too at the same time. X rated. Um and he E40. just got out of jail. E forty. Sugar T. The whole click. Wow. You know, um but that's what's up, man. You know, big shout out um, to you know, doing all that, you know what I'm saying? Because that's definitely, you know, 
making history, like what people are really listening today in the music world, you know, especially when the DJ is ready to spin his set. And if if he's doing a 90s set, you know, that really takes them back into knowing what history really is. You know, when Pat came with all eyes on me, you know, like, what do you think about that song? Did you, um, did you have anything to do with that? That all eyes on me? I had nothing to do with that song, but, um, it's, you know, one of my favorite songs, of course, you know, from Tupac. You know, um, at that point, you know, he was fully death row. And that's kind of like when I wasn't there because I moved back to the Bay area, you know, from L.A. So oh, at that time, he had, just got out, he, had, yeah, he had just got out of jail. And then, you know, he was back and forth into jail at sometimes, you know, Pac, because of certain situations. But he always got out real fast. But it wasn't until, you know, Shook bailed him out. And when Shook bailed him out, that's kind of like... I've seen him, but not as much as I used to. I wasn't hanging with him every day like that when, right. when he was at death row. I talked to him on the phone a lot and seen him a couple other times, you know, and worked, you know, briefly, but not like how it was, like every day continuously. Me and Pocket was every day continuously for a long so, time. So, did, so do you have, like, live footages of you and him or oh, pictures? I'm back in the day. We actually do have some live footage that Rated R has, but Rated R is locked up for life in prison right now. It's until he gets out that we could really release it because he owns that footage because he was the only one with a, a camera that looked the size of a VHS. Well, it was a VHS camera that he had. <laughs> wow. You got to remember, at this point, there was no cameras. We had no phones. The only phones we had were brick phones and beepers. Right. Okay, hey, I, got a beeper. yeah. I, I got a beeper. Just, yeah, I got a beeper I just found, too. Yeah. So it was, it, you know, it was hard to capture video back then unless, that's why nobody had videos. You got to pay like five or six thousand dollars to, to have a, a real rap video back then. You know what I mean? It ain't, exactly. it ain't like it now. You can make a video with your damn phone nowadays. You know what I mean? So uh, them days, it was hard to capture, you know, uh, studio footage. Not too many have a lot of that studio footage. You know? But even when you do see it, you can see it's still grimy. Mike Mosley has some footage that we're going to be using for the uh, Machiavelli movie. Uh, that a lot of people haven't seen. Rated R has his own footage too, and he's appealing uh, constantly, you know, with uh, in, in in the prison system right now. So we hope that he gets out because that's his footage that he owns, and he'll probably end up dropping his own movie of of the stuff that he has. And he's he's the main guy that has all the Tupac footage. Yep. For the right. times that what what we were doing, but that footage would be more of the the older footage, like the Me Against the World footage, not the you know, hey, no, no, let me, ask, let, me ask you, let me ask you this. No, um, mm-hmm. was Pac serious about becoming president? <laughs> no, he never, he never talked about it. Not to, not to me or anybody. He was, he was into politics. He was just going to the community and having a better community and stuff like that. Like he probably yeah. would have been able later on in his life probably to, you know, uh, run for president if he wanted to, you know, because you see how many people love him to this day, but at the end of the day, it wasn't something that he thought to do. Uh, he was more into uh, making movies. He wanted to make movies. He was right, always right. talking about movies. He was always uh, talking about that. When we were in the studio, all smoking the blunts, and they were going in circles like that, that's what he was talking about. Like the movies that he made, that he wrote scripts to. And I know exactly what his scripts were, what he wanted to do. Uh, and so did James Michael Marshall. James Michael Marshall was supposed to be the guy to... Uh, do the movies for Tupac. And later he moved on to, I think, to Cleveland, Ohio, out over there. He's in Ohio because he wanted to start the film industry over there. But only James Michael Marshall has that, that script of Tupac, of what Tupac wanted to put out. I know what the movie is about. I know the whole concept. I know everything about it. But there's there's more parts to it that went in deep that James Marco Marshall has that nobody has besides him. And that's Tupac's movie. Hopefully we can get a hold of James Michael Marshall and have him put out that movie because that movie to this day will be written, produced, and directed by Tupac because that was his vision. And that movie has not yet surfaced. Cool. That's deep, right? See, these are the type of stories you're going to hear in Machiavelli, man. This is going to be kind of so huge that people are going to ask for that. They're going to want that. They're going to get a hold of James Michael Marshall and they're going to get that movie. And it's going to be cast like James Michael Marshall, but you thank me because I'm going to revise all that shit because that shit needs to come out because that was Tupac. That was what he, what he made in his brain. That was his baby. 
And that baby's going to be born if we get a hold of James Michael Marshall. Wow. Put that out. You heard it here in the book, folks. Right here. Wow. These are the stories that I have. These are the real true Machiavelli, Tupac Amaru stories from DJ King of Sassy. Won't hear it anywhere else. That's right here. Yes, uh, history, your your history is going down. It is going down. I have to keep them for a couple of seconds more because it's so interesting, and the the energy on this call tonight is just mind blowing. Y'all agree, like for real, for real, like yes, come yeah, on, most definitely. It, it, you know, especially <laughs> like. Like, when you DJ, like, um, you know, like, big shows and stuff, like, who you, you know, who mm-hmm. you, who all you DJed with before, you know, on the ticket? Well, the ticket right now, you know, coming up this weekend, as everybody knows, uh, I'm glad you said that because that's a beautiful promo for the show that's coming up. It's called the Ticket Cane Show. Well, I DJ for cocaine. A lot of people, we're going to have to get him on the call, too, cocaine. So he has a good story to tell about, you know, working with Dr. Dre. Uh, Code 187, you know, from above the law. That's kind of like the umbrella to that I came up under as well, not just digital underground, but, you know, uh, I've been knowing Code 187, uh, Hutch, for over 30 years. You know what I mean? That's my brother right there. And he uh, was another guy that I grew up listening to, then later met. Like, that that was with Tupac. I already knew him. We were like friends, you know what I mean? Because we were in the same area, but. But with Cole 187, like, we looked up to him because he had already made it. In our eyes, he was he was with Oh, man. Day, you know what I mean? Check yeah, this so, out. Maybe yeah, you could get him on um on the, on the Spitfire in the National no Show. Problem. We will get him. We will get him. We will get him on the show. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. I had a chance to introduce him to Lloyd not too long ago, and they hit it off real well. They got some business adventures going on right now, Lloyd and Cole 187. That we'll probably talk about later, but it's like top secret news too. But uh, at the same time, we'll we'll let it be known right here on the Spitfire show. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, you know those type of things, man. Well, you know, California is a small place. Everybody knows each other. Everybody knows each other's history and everything. That's why I hate when you have these people from you know outside of the United States that try to tell us our own story about Tupac or try to say. They know this or they know that when they don't know nothing because they wasn't there. How right. can you talk about my own history? Nobody can tell us about our own history. Of course Besides not, California. because you haven't lived it. So how can you tell exactly. someone about their history? <laughs> it's just dummy dummy, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, well, see, you have these Tupac fans out there that are like this. They think they know Tupac so good that they're, they're going off of everything online that they hear, and they don't know, like, the real story. Just like the story you hear about with what I'm saying that is 100% authentic, they don't know these stories because they've never been published. That's why we're doing this movie, so we, we're kind of like going to school them on this movie, too, on a lot of new things that they didn't know about. They just know about Tupac. Yeah, he had an album. He was with Big Underground and signed here and then blew up to stardom. There's a whole lot of work that went into that. You know, uh, a whole lot of work that they didn't know about. And songs they've never heard in their life that they're just, like, dying for, like the They'll give up all the Chuck E. Cheese tokens and Chuck E. Cheese credit cards just to have some of these. Deals. And I'm glad you said right. that because all they know about is all eyes on me, their mama, bear me a G, you know, and different, different, um, you know, um, songs that really exactly. stick out. But they don't know no underground yeah. sounds. Exactly. And, and, you know, you named it right there like one of the biggest songs in history. They didn't even know the history of their mama of oh. What, what I said, they they think they know the OG versions. They don't know shit. Nope. They don't know none. Was the version. But they're Tupac fans. Yeah. You all need to do your and research. You, exactly. you feel me? So, especially DJ King of Sass. They got to tune, said- tune in. They got to tune into stations like this to hear the the realism, man. And I'm glad that you, you know, you're from Trinidad and living in Tennessee, but you know your history. You know how to compile it. There's talks like yourself, Jay Mix, and everybody that really dig deep down into the history to find out the real truth, you know what I mean, about people. And, and you yes, do, uh, and you get them on your show, and it's, and it's an incredible show because sometimes, just being on a show, like, I'll remember certain things that, I'm like, damn, I remember that shit. Let me talk about it because there's things that I was talking about on tonight's show 
that I had kind of like forgot about with with the blood smoking and telling people that that's the first time I ever seen a blood like right right thing. right. You know what I mean? So, they were in your rearview mirror. That's why. They were in my rearview mirror. Exactly. And, and those things come up. So I'm glad to do shows like this. I'm glad that y'all get me so that I can, you know, get out of my, my, my spirit to into the spirit of the world to remember certain things that come right. to me of my experiences of doing early music and, and being around Tupac and being around the White Clubs, being around Roger Troutman. Being around Easy E, you know what I mean. Easy E's another right. one that I work with. You know, we've been um, doing we've been doing this for a long time. You know, interviewing a lot of people. You know, and I'm sure you have been doing it too on your show. So you know, I just want right. to give you the cool sign as well too on my show that you are welcome to bring any artist celebrity that you know through on my show, and we chop it up. You heard? That's right, and we will. We definitely will. I know we're working, me and Laura are working with a lot of incredible artists. One artist we're working with, too, we want to bring her on the show is Ronice Levias. She sang on the original, uh, you know, uh, Brenda's Got a Baby. You know, Brenda's Got a Baby by Tupac. Oh, Sheba, Brenda's uh, Got a Baby, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she sang on Digital Underground, yeah, sang on Digital Underground Tupac, uh, you know, uh, Too Short, uh, The Tonys. She, she's real close with Bobby Brown, you know what I mean? And New Whitney Houston, she's an incredible singer. We'll get her, we're mixing down her album right now, which is incredible. And, you know, there's a lot of other people that we work with, so it's kind of like the people we work with we'll bring on your show, and we'll also, uh, you know, bring some of uh, our past friends that, you know, are, are still working, but they're kind of like into something else now besides making music. Because let's face it, folks, sometimes when you do this music for a long time and, and you're as old as us, well, as old as me, I should say, sometimes <laughs> this music does get old to you and you really don't want to do it no more. Then you venture off into other things. And then other things still are important that mean things to people. You know what I mean? Just like Cole 187, he really doesn't do the music thing no more. He's doing the Rock Boy Honey with uh, doing, you know, for models. You know, uh, we have this whole model industry going crazy right there in California. And, you know, you can check him out on Rock Boy Honey. 187. If you search that on Instagram, you'll follow what he's doing. So, you know, even though he was part of the incredible group uh, above the law, he's doing his own thing now, which is different than music. It has nothing to do with music, but you know, that's that's he found his his thing. What he's doing now. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had this purpose in music. Don't get me wrong. And was you know quite so, platinum over there with selling records to this day, but. And, right. and making a whole lot of hits for a lot of other people, you know what I mean? But it's more of a situation now. Sometimes we in life, we, we just want to do other things. Like, I love music. You know, I kind of, like, took a big break from it for a minute, and I was just hosting other people's mixtapes. But uh, I also was, you know, uh, getting into this King of Fashion show, and we, we came up with this whole comedian type of thing and just having fun with with people, you know what I mean, right. and interacting with people. That So it's something different than music. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm talking about, man. It's like, you know, everybody has a purpose. And, and just because it's one purpose that people know about, there's other purposes that, you know, come into play that later become just as successful as other people's purposes. Yes. Absolutely, man. Yo. Like, but for real, music, for real. But music brought everything into play. So that's really, you know, a beautiful thing in itself because if it wasn't for the music, we wouldn't be doing the, the comedy. We wouldn't be doing any of this. It's the music itself that brought everything together, and that's very common in today's world with, you know, uh, just the way things are going, you know. But that's how we connected with the music, so, you know. Hey. Right, right. You know. Uh, I'm thankful for that. That's That's awesome, man. Like, Y'all, this is big stuff, you know, going down right now. This is history being made right here with the King Assassin and Lloyd Elves right here on the Spitfire International Show, y'all. We're just keeping it pushing right now for all the viewers out there that's listening live. Spitting it. Spitfire. We're spitting that fire. That fire that Man, that's how that started off. I was a rapper, too. That's how the name came in there. And then I just ventured off in the DJ world. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. man. And, and you see, who were who, who some of your influences growing up? Spitfire Ninja. You know what I mean, DJ Ninja? Tell us about some of the people that inspired you to, 
you know, we talked about, you know, doing the whole thing in, in front of that and DJing out there. Who, who artists, what, what hip-hop artists, I should say, or was it even hip-hop that really, you know, got you to, to where you're at right now? What, what really sparked me up is with, like, different concerts used to, you know, come into play, and then... You know, um, I wanted to be like, man, you know, one day I'm a DJ for, you know, all them thousands of people or all them hundreds of people out there. And, you know, I really see myself doing something like that, reaching out to the tops, you know, getting discovered, you know, and just doing it big, you know. And then my mom, she's like, you know, really to push me to a whole nother level on doing this thing because she knows what the entertainment business is. And she, you know, she said, yeah, if you really, you know, want to make it that big, just go out there and just start bringing out a lot of artists and co sign for them. And that's what I end up doing. And I end up signing, you know, um, not signing, but co signing, you know, that in, you know, actually um, endorsing basically that, you know, people will you know, fuck with different artists from different states and different, you know, sides of the world, you know, because my name, you know, and I've done with work with them. So it was like, hey, you know what, I like that, you know, and we could definitely grow like that with people, you know, just being um, collided. Because I was actually wanted to ask you, um, I, I would like to do a mixtape with you. So, you know. That's something to look out for. <laughs> get the DJ, get the DJ horns ready. Let's put it into play, man. Get the horns ready. Get get the drops ready. I'll get the drops ready. You get the drops ready. I know we got the memberships happening. The memberships are gonna be at nine ninety five, nine ninety five. We're gonna sell them all the way to nine ninety five, ninja to all the people that want to get on the mixtape. So it's nine ninety five for to get on the mixtape. Uh, Ten ninety five to get uh, two songs on the mixtape, but we got to figure out which mixtape we're gonna be on. Either mixtape number one by Ninja, mixtape number two by Ninja, or uh, you can get on chapter three. The chapter three, which will be uh, hosted with Lloyd Alexander, and Fast and Ninja. So if you want to get a part of that, man, you better just hit up that motherfucking goddamn motherfucking thing and get it right to us through the email, and we'll get you right on the mixtape. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh... <laughs> Man, we we just sparking some things up, man. It, 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 it's because it's it's fun chopping it up with legends. You know what I'm saying? That's like a whole bar situation right there. People don't yeah, chop it up with legends on the phone every day. They chop it up with Tom, Dick, and Harry and Susie from around the block. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Susie Q's. They're at the Susie Q's, man. We used to eat the Susie Q's back in the day. You know what I mean? Uh, Susie Q. Man, do they still have the Susie Q's out there? Oh, my brother's informing me that they still have the Susie Q's available to, to eat. Man. <laughs> So you know we'll be breaking a lot of artists on 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 the on the radio station, and that's you know that that's what I'm I'm definitely working towards right now. My my the radio station um, Memphis Dons, you know we're we're we're, we're definitely going to start breaking a lot of artists out there because a, a lot of artists already start being broken, especially from the Memphis, Memphis Tennessee. I'm glad you mentioned Memphis Tennessee. Big yeah. shout to A Ball and MJG, man. You know, yeah. the I mean, when I think of Memphis, Tennessee, there's like two things that I think about. Well, actually, three. Uh, you know, of course, Elvis Presley, first of all. Yeah, Elvis, you know. And, uh, right, Tennessee, the king of rock and roll. The king of rock and roll and a ball with MJG. And, and then the song that Arrested Development did to Tennessee. Absolutely. You know what I'm talking about. Maybe I love to sing that hook right now. Can you sing that hook for us from uh, Tennessee? Uh, Mr. Lloyd L.A.L. Yeah. You talking about that track, Tennessee? Yeah, Tennessee. How, 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 does, how, how does it go, man? It's been a little while. I, I can't, I can't lie. It's been a little while since I heard that track, man. How, how does it go, man? Take me to another place. Take me to another. <laughs> Let me understand. I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Take Y'all are funny. Another place. Take me to another. T- is that how it goes? Yeah. Tennessee, Tennessee. Yeah, you got me. Yeah. You got me on that one. But uh, I'm gonna have to okay. listen to that one again. It's been a little while. Thanks for reminding me, man. Oh yeah, man. You know it's all love, cuz. But listen here, what we doing, right? We're actually, um, you know, cause you talk about MJ, MJG eight ball, right? 
I actually, well, I yeah, man, I actually met his producer, man, and we chopped it up. We sit down, man. Uh, it was really, really phenomenal chopping it up with another legend in Tennessee, the guy that really created the Memphis guy. Sound. Yeah, man, it was awesome. You know, I've been in his boot, man. You know, and we just been chopping it up, and he's the one that really put me on to the radio station out here. So, you know, we're all working, yeah. bro. We're all working together. Man, right that's now. a blessing. That's a blessing. And, and, I, and I know that doing what you do, it must just really feel good to you, and you feel very, you know, right at home, you know, doing what you're doing. Because I can tell you love what you, you know, what you do, because I can hear it through your voice right now, and, and, and that's beautiful, man. You know, man, this is just to come back again. Like I said, baby, is the energy. You know, if you got if you got the energy, that good energy, I want you around me. If you don't got that good energy, you don't need to be around me. So, that's, that's right. right. Amen. Amen. And that, you know what? That that right there, I think, is that's life, my brother. You just hit it right there. Like I can't say it no better than that. Say that again. Say it again, Ninja. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, is the energy, you know, I just want some yeah. good energy around me, you know, and everybody that's around me and have been with me, I just want that good energy. But if you got that bad energy, just stay away from around me. People feel that. People feel that bad energy, and you want to remove yourself right away from that, man. And, and you know, like you always say, uh, DJ King assassin. Sometimes you just gotta change the channel. Change the channel. Switch it. You gotta change that channel because that changes the way you're thinking. That changes what you're thinking about. Sometimes you might be thinking about something bad, and then you might be thinking about some kind of lick that you're gonna do, but you know it's bad. You gotta change that channel because you know the outcome. There could be a bad outcome from that. So, you know, you you are what you put yourself into. You want to put yourself into positive thinking. You want to be yeah. able to. You're on. Um, that don't know road, get out of that don't know road. If you're on that jealous road, get out of that jealous road. If you're on that That's road right. of, of hungriness, thirsty road, get off a of thirsty road. What road do you want to go to? You want to stay on faith road and have that faith, have that faith in God because you don't want That's to miss, right. miss some packages coming. you got to stay on that same road for the simple fact that that road is going to deliver the packages to you. It's not that some packages ain't going to get to you on the don't know road or on the jealousy road or on the, you know, uh, the Robin mode road. You, you got to stay on the Robin. godly road. You got to stay on the godly road, and that's you and gotta, that's what you, you said basically on, on in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, man. Stay on that godly road and be good to people, you know, and you, have, you know treat you people how you want to be God. treated. You have to have you know? faith in God, and the reason why I say it's faith because that's hope. You know what I mean? And that's believing in God. You have to have that faith in God. That's right. You look at that package. He's going to deliver a package to you. You know, you're going to be missing your packages. You're going to be missing your surprises. You're going to be missing all the good things that God can be given to you if you're not on that road and our address that God wants you on. And that address is on faith road where you need to be to have faith right. in you God. Gotta let, you got to let go. Be. You got to let go of the, uh, of the hurt. You got to let go, you know, of the hate. You got to let go of why me? Why am I in this situation? Why did this happen? No, you're in that situation for a reason, and you've got to redirect, and you've got to change that channel and redirect, you know, through God and through God only. And that is the way that you have, you know, you will, you will continue to, you know, to find your purpose. And when you find that purpose, you continue, you know, to allow God to, you know, to help you through every situation throughout the day because, that negativity is always going to be there. You have to change the channel, and you have to realize that, you know what, I ain't letting the enemy in. I'm going to allow God to continue, you know, to help me through the, through the day, through a time, you know, period that you're having rough times. you gotta, you got to lean on God, man, and amen. Amen. Amen to that. I'm glad you said that because, you know, amen. all that hate road amen. and that jealousy road, get off of them roads and stay on that faith road, man, right here. Spitfire in the house, DJ Ninja, L.A. Lord L, DJ King Assassin. You're right here with us tonight, and where else can you be but right here, man? And we thank you, uh, Ninja, for having us on the show with us again. We thank you. Thank you. My heart. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, bro. Y'all my brothers, man. Y'all my West Coast brothers out there. So, you know. 
I really appreciate well, that with me being on the um but I just wanna let you know that producer that produces M J G we're going back to that right mm-hmm. quick, is DJ Zerk. And I wanna I just wanna give him a shout out, you know. For um shout out to him, man. Big shout out to him. Um, yeah, big shout out for producing, you know, all those um legends out there in the Memphis area as well too. And um having the great opportunity to work with him out here and soon we all will be working together. So, you know, um man, we're just, you know, making this connection so big right now that, you know, it's really, really a legend connection, mm-hmm. you know. So that's right, and get a hold of DJ Ninja, man, if you want to get the mixtape popping on, uh, you know, the mixtape hosted by me and DJ Ninja, and also Mr. Lloyd L.A. Alves in the building, you know, with the production in right there, man. You can't go wrong. So tune on in and tap on in or tap on out. You know, oh, <laughs> that's right, that's right. So um, tell everybody where they can find you right quick, vice versa, myself. We're all on Instagram, and we're all on Twitter. Bye. That's right. Exactly. And uh, with me, you can find me just at DJ King Assassin around the whole block. You know what I mean? Just at DJ King Assassin on Instagram, at DJ King Assassin on Twitter. On Facebook, you can uh, also follow the King Assassin Show. Just uh, search for the King Assassin Show and I'll pop up. Lloyd will pop up. Ninja will pop up because we all support each other. Once you search that, you'll find all of our, you know, networks under one roof uh, through the King Assassin Show. So, you know, uh, that's how you do it. And Lloyd, I think you have uh, uh, the website, too. I'll let you talk about it. Go ahead and let everybody know. Yeah, you'll be able to find me on, uh, on Facebook, Lloyd L.A. Elves. Same thing on Instagram. Same thing on Twitter. And then you'll be able to, uh, to get on the website, which is unshakable.la. And then we do have a, a live feed coming, you know, from the, from the fashion show on that as well. So you'll be able to see, you know, that and also the – you know, everything that's, you know, that's going on. We, we've got everything, like DJ King uh, said, we've got everything tied in. So, you know, you'll be able to go back and forth and, and uh, you know, you got it. We're rolling. Rolling, 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 man. Keep it rolling, rolling, and that's what it's all about is to keep on rolling and keep your faith in God and, and you know, continue to, you know, live positive and stay away from the bad food, stay away from, uh, yep you know, the negative vibes and negative people and, you know what I mean, you'll, you'll be good. That's all I can say. That's right. That's what it is, man. We take our hats off to you, my brother, for you keeping us on, on board. And until next time and in between time, keep it locked on Spitfire here, man, because he's a big supporter of ours and we'll be supportive of his. And we're going to bring time all up like a shoelace. The game is to be sold, not told, but right here, you can get something for free. That's right, knowledge, because knowledge is power. Power is knowledge. Keep it on lock. Somebody call the apple. Somebody call the firefighters, because big fire is here. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, y'all. We appreciate everybody for listening in on the Fit Fire Show. And you already know what time it is, man. How we say, how we do. And we're out of here. One look. One and remember love. to follow us up on the website, okay? www.spitfireinternational.weebly.com.